Warm, humid night in South Florida. The national championship of college football on the line. Number one, Clemson against number four, Nebraska. Danny Ford, college coach of the year, just 33 years old, leads his number one Clemson Tigers into the game against a counterpart of long standing and high ranking among the coaches, Tom Osborne, the coach of Nebraska. He calls this his ninth team at Nebraska, the best he's ever had. Earlier, both coaches spent those quiet moments before game time in the locker room with their players. Let's hear what they had to say. <laughs> okay, fellas, we think that it's the uh, same thing as always. We've told you through 11 games, we want you to really concentrate out there. Now, it's going to be a lot of crowd noise. Clemson's got a very vocal following. Nebraska does. And so be sure when you get in that huddle that you know what the play is. Defensively, you know what the signals are. That you, you really concentrate. Everybody has to know what everybody else is doing. Well, gentlemen, you got your last football game to go into. Your seniors done a good job on your leadership part. We appreciate everything you've done for Clemson University. You got a chance to go out with most wins of any Clemson team in history. You worked awful hard. You went represented your conference well. You're, you're an ACC champion. It's a big football game for you. You know that. There's a lot at stake in the football game. But the most important thing you should do when you go out and play in a football game like this just go out and have fun. Just go out, don't worry about mistakes. Go out and play reckless. Play with your hearts. Lay it on the line. Do the best that you can do. And that's all that anybody can ask of. And so Coach Ford and the Tigers go for the national title. Good evening, everyone. Don Crickey with John Brody. Glad you can be with us as NBC watches Clemson go for the championship. Despite the number one ranking, Clemson doesn't get a lot of respect. Their All-American linebacker Jeff Davis says he's tired of people asking him, what's Clemson? Where's Clemson at? Is that in North Carolina? We all know it's in South Carolina. Football people, John, certainly know who Clemson is. I'll tell you, the National Football League has Clemson graduates scattered all throughout the country, so I think a lot of people are gaining more and more knowledge, and a lot of them already know. John, they say you win championships with great defense. Nebraska surely has that. On an eight-game win streak, they've allowed just six points a game over that stretch. I think they're concerned a little bit about Clemson's offense, though, and Homer Jordan. They better be. Homer Jordan's one of those fellas that can be so dynamic, no matter how good you are structurally, he can beat you with his execution. If I'm Tom Osborne, that's my concern. If I'm Dan Ford, I'm concerned about the line of scrimmage. Are, are our fellas who line up at 6'5", on an average, big and strong enough to handle the beef from Nebraska? If we are, I think they deserve to be number one. That's Dan's, that's Dan's concern. It's a big chore. All right, John, a third member of our NBC broadcast team with us is Mr. Bob Trumpy. Robert? Thank you, Don. Uh, even though there may be bedlam on the field in the Orange Bowl tonight between Clemson and Nebraska, hopefully these gentlemen right here have cool heads. They're the offensive coaches of Nebraska and defensive coaches of Nebraska. This is the brain trust. They will relay signals down from here, getting a different perspective of the game and giving them to Tom Osborne. Later on in the game, we'll go back to the Clemson booth to give you a different perspective of this Orange Bowl for the national title. All right, Bob, thank you. And you can see the Orange Bowl is packed. The ticket to man the greatest it's ever been in the 48-year history of this great event as Clemson comes down from South Carolina, the Palmetto State, to go against Nebraska, and the Huskers are on a roll right now. They blasted Oklahoma their last time out. Nebraska coming in with a rushing offense that gains over 330 yards a game, but Clemson doesn't give up much. They're one of the best teams in the country in scoring defense. In fact, in their 11 wins, only one team scored more than 10 points against Clemson. And Don, I think you'll see tonight some of the fellas that haven't had the recognition that some of their All-Americans have be very instrumental in this ball game because they've got a couple of outside defensive end linebacker combinations. A kid named Andy Hedden, an old quarterback, number 12. And I think you may see an awful lot of them. Donald Igwebuike, a Nigerian, kicks off for Clemson, drives it down the field. The ball is picked up by Irving Fryer, and Clemson makes the tackle at about the 27-yard line. Now let's take a look at Nebraska on offense. There's their quarterback, a senior Mark Maurer, his running backs, and their good ones, fullback Phil Bates and tailback Roger Craig. The receivers for Nebraska after the interior linemen. Todd Brown is the wide out. Jamie Williams is the tight end, a typical big Nebraska tight end. Randy Tice is the left tackle. Mike Van Delco at left guard. Maybe the best player in the country right there, Dave Remington, the right guard. Tom Carlston, the right tackle is Dan Hurley. And it's first and 10 now for Nebraska. They go from their 25-yard line. To the run to Roger Craig, and he's across the 30-yard line. 
Out to the 31. The Nebraska Ibacks, Roger Craig and Mike Rogier, he alternates with him, are averaging well over six yards a rush this season. Bill Smith made the knockdown for Clemson. On the first carry of the game, Nebraska gets six yards. First meeting ever between Nebraska and Clemson. We'll check out that Clemson defense now as we watch Nebraska go second and four. First back through the fullback. Phil Bates gets a couple. He's short of the first down. Clemson, a fired up group of guys. They forced 39 turnovers this season. Left end Bill Smith, left tackle Dan Benish, middle guard William Perry, a freshman, 305 pounds. Jeff Bryant is the right tackle, a top pro prospect. Andy Hedden is a rover. He plays the right end. The linebackers, Danny Triplett and All-American Jeff Davis, the ACC Player of the Year. Now, it's third and two for Nebraska. Opening series of downs for the Huskers after taking the opening kickoff. One wide receiver, Todd Brown, set to the left. Hour rolls out, pitches back, free ball, and Clemson's going to get it. William Devane, the middle guard, number 94, came up with the football. And we saw the first play well executed seven yard game. William Devane took chances on first down, second down, and third down. They were effective on second and third. That was a fumble that was caused by excellent defensive play, Don. Watch, watch the middle guard shoot across Remington's face. That forces the play to the outside. Excellent defensive play. Number 94, William Devane. Not only did he make the play happen, he recovered the fumble. The 40th turnover this year that Clemson has forced, taking the ball away, and now the Tigers on their first possession start inside the Nebraska 30. Here's Homer Jordan rolling out, gets it away and hits a strike. Downfield to his tight end, Bubba Diggs, inside the 15-yard line. William Devane, one of the Bruise brothers, B-R-U-I-S-E. The other one is the 305-pound William Perry. He alternates at middle guard with. Homer Jordan's the quarterback and one of the best. Tailback Cliff Austin. Clemson going with Jeff McCall at fullback. He'd missed the last two games with injuries. Gain of four yards on the first play. It's second down and six now for the Clemson Tigers. From the 25, hand up. Austin turns inside the Nebraska 20 and gets down to the 17-yard line as Sammy Sims, the monster back, made the knockdown. Checking out now the rest of the Clemson offense. They got about 50,000 people back in a wide receiver. He's an All-American. Perry Tuttle, number 22. The wing back, underrated and dangerous, Jerry Gilliard. And the tight end, you saw him in action, Bubba Diggs. Now, Clemson goes first and 10 from the Nebraska 17-yard line. Jordan running with the ball is Kevin Mack. Didn't get much. Got down to about the 16-yard line. The offensive blockers, and they're huge for Clemson. Brad Fisher and Jamie Farr at the left side. The center is an ACC all-conference player, Tony Berryhill, Brian Clark, and the best offensive lineman, and right tackle Lee Nanny, an All-American. The Husker band is here. So are many people down from Lincoln and all over the state of Nebraska. But right now, Clemson looking to capitalize on the first big break of this game, the fumble recovery. Second down and 10. Jordan rolling out. He can run or he can throw well on the run. Gets the ball away. It's out of bounds. A high defensive play. Brent Evans, one of the Nebraska linebackers, came over and hammered Homer Jordan as he released the ball. Let's check out the Cornhuskers on defense now. What a group this is. Averaging the opposition just six points a game over the last eight. The Williams brothers on the left side. Jimmy's a first-team All-American. The middle guard from Huntsville, Alabama, Jeff Merrill, Henry Waxter, and Tony Felici on the right side. Steve Dan Kroger plays one of the linebackers. Brent Evans is the other. And now, third down and ten comes up. Clemson at the 17-yard line of Nebraska. Homer Jordan, deep drop, has a drop, he's down. Outside the 25-yard line, Don. Don, it's, it's no secret. These teams have played, they both play the same style of offense. They know the strengths of each other. That time Perry Tuttle was, was the intended receiver. We went down the field, was double covered. And if you defense the right fella at the right time, it's very, it's very difficult to, to execute offensively. But take a look. Here's a man that has, has really been one of the great 
in a long line of great wide receivers at Clemson. First, he's got to get underneath the cornerback. Then he's got to make a move on the safety. Woo! Now, the field goal attempt by the Nigerian soccer kicker, Donald Igwebike. He has the first points of the game up in the Tigers of Clemson. Number one in the country, our first on the scoreboard, leading 3-0. Each year, a number of schools are investigated by the NCAA for alleged recruiting violations. The Clemson Tigers are putting their number one ranking on the line against the University of Nebraska in this Orange Bowl Classic. However, a cloud hangs over this Clemson team, a cloud which results from a lawsuit initiated by two former high school football players recruited by Clemson who eventually signed letters of intent to attend Clemson. The players have alleged that they were given money by Clemson football officials and an alumnus causing them to violate NCAA recruitment rules and impair their college football eligibility. Much has been written and reported about these allegations. However, Clemson has chosen not to comment because it feels it would be inappropriate to do so while the investigation is ongoing. Here's what Coach Danny Ford had to say earlier. Well, I, you know, that's, it's been a one-way street. Uh, uh, everybody's uh, got publicity for, about Clemson and all that. We're, we're not concerned about that, and, and I say that uh, with all truthfulness, uh, we're not concerned about anything other than Nebraska and the Orange Bowl at this time. And uh, we're proud of what uh, our young people have accomplished again. And uh, if, if something were to come up on it, it, it comes up. But uh, we're not uh, neglecting it and we're not trying to put it off or anything else. Uh, uh, our people, uh, I think, have done a good job and I don't, I'm not ashamed of anything they've done. Don, I know this, Igwebike just put one in the clouds. He put it about, that ball would have been good for 65 yards had he needed that much distance, and they'd get off to a three to nothing lead, and uh, they've been very impressive in the early moments. They have, they capitalized on the first turnover of this game. Igwebike, ready to kick off now. Donald, he's called, because the last name is a little rough. He's, he's got such a short, it looks like a guy that's hitting a pitch shot. Yeah. Now, he looks like a soccer player, and that's the way soccer players kick a ball. But what distance? Well, he's kicked him from 67 yards in practice. Now he hits a high kickoff down to Mike Rozier, taking the ball back for Nebraska. Rozier breaks the first wave of pursuit. Comes out across the 30-yard line to the 33. Rozier, a hard-running tailback. The sophomore takes it back, 32-yard return, and so... Nebraska goes on offense a second time. Must consider that these bold teams, these two clubs last played November 21st. They've not had a football game in six weeks. And Don, you know, Dan, Dan said, hey, I hope it's the kind of game where both teams are just having to go at one another. Everybody gets excited because if we find out that we can play with them, I like our chances. All right now, Clemson has that lead, 3-0. Rogier carries some scrimmage on a first and 10 play. He works hard for four, maybe five yards and takes the ball out to the 38-yard line. The defensive secondary for Clemson, not big, but very, very fast. Hollis Hall's at one corner. The other corner, the smallest player on the defensive unit, Anthony Rose. is an All-American at the free safety, a first-team All-American in Terry Kennard. And Tim Childers is the strong safety. Seven-yard gain on that rush. Second down and three for Nebraska, right back to the eye back. Straight ahead goes Rozier. He's across the 40 and close to a first down. Rozier's been averaging over 100 yards a game over the last seven games. The sophomore from New Jersey has started to come on late in the season. The two tailbacks who alternate for Nebraska, Rozier and Roger Craig, gained over 2,000 yards between them. And, you know, the, we'll see who it is that can handle it tonight because both of these teams are so similar structure-wise. They both love that eye back. They've seen these blocks in practice for the last six months, so nobody's going to fool anybody. It's who finds the crack and makes the best of it. Well, Homer Jordan, the Clemson quarterback, said watching Nebraska's films on offense was like watching our offense. Rozier on third and inches can get to the line of scrimmage, and then he's upended by Andy Hedden. A big, rangy defensive end who plays all over the field. Hedden, 6'5", 230. He'll play in the secondary. He'll play linebacker. He'll come up to the line of scrimmage as he did there, but Rozier did get ahead for the first down. You know, when you see a guy playing in the secondary, you see him blitzing the quarterback, and you see him playing tough at the line of scrimmage, it's generally he's got... They give him very little responsibility, Don. They let him make his own his own headway. And it's a guy, he started out as a quarterback. He's 6'5", 230. He's a perfect outside linebacker for professional football. They say he may be as smart as any defensive player they've ever had there. 
Well, Hidden was a high school quarterback, so he knows both ways. And now Rozier takes a strike from Jeff Davis, the All-American linebacker for Clemson, who led this team in tackles with 161. Number 45 makes the play. Simple little eye play. Not a lot of fool in it. When you meet the man at the line of scrimmage, it's not going very far. Now is second down and eight for Nebraska. Very short gain on the play. Clemson is in the lead, 3 nothing. Maurer with a good play fake, throws on the run. He's got Todd Brown downfield. Brown goes up in the air, comes down with the ball at the 43-yard line of Clemson. Danny Triplett, a linebacker, chapped him. But the Cornhuskers get the gainer for the first down. You know, people have been discussing uh, Maurer's sore arm. I watched him last night, and if there's one thing he doesn't have, it's a sore arm. He's got a gun. He may throw the ball a little too swiftly for my money, but he does throw it with a lot on it, and he hits the open man in the middle of the field in between the seams, as well as, as, as the quarterbacks I've seen in college all year. Well, he's a baseball catcher. Major League prospect has been drafted by the Minnesota Twins. His arm bothered him earlier. He was throwing well recently, and now Maurer on a snap ball with penalty markers down takes off himself, and the play comes back. We have 8.36 left to play in the first quarter. Clemson's in the lead 3-0 on the 41-yard field goal, their first possession by Donald Igwebike. There is William Perry, a freshman. Middle guard, illegal procedure goes against the Tigers of Clemson. William Perry, 6 feet 3, 305 pounds, and he's still growing. They could add up, they could put both cornerbacks standing on top of one another they'd be just a little bigger than Bill Perry when a guy can dunk a basketball dunk a football over a goal post he weighs over 300 pounds and he's only 6 three uh, you've got some kind of rare athlete now when you're only a freshman to go with that you can see a lot of him in the future William Perry is the nose guard 66 now it's first and five for Nebraska after the penalty against Clemson and off to Rozier and he's chopped at the line of scrimmage Rozier comes out running hard from that deep stand Playing about eight yards off the line of scrimmage is the tailback looking for the holes, and Bill Smith cut him down. They say, John, that William Perry eats like a man going to the chair. He can really put it away. Well, we're going to watch. This is the way it goes. He's also playing against the Outland Trophy winner, and Remington runs him right back into the cheap seats, and that's going to happen when you play a man of his of his quality. Now they've got William D. Bain. They're going to try and intersperse them so they don't, neither one gets uh, too tired. It's tough playing Remington. Nebraska outrushed its opponents this year by over 2,000 yards, actually by over 2,100 yards in 11 games. Now on second down and short yardage, the Huskers take it right at the Clemson defense. Power the football down to the 31-yard line. The fullback, Phil Bates, gets the first down. And I'll tell you who's given a lot of credit is Remington again. This time they put William Devane on his nose. We saw Devane get the best of Remington early. They know it's a great matchup. He comes out second best this time. Nebraska picks up a first down. Dave Remington, junior center for Nebraska, the Outland Trophy winner, a player of professional scouts. Many of them say right now is the best college football player in the country at any position. At his position. They say <laughs> at any position. They'd say he'd be number one in the draft if he was a senior. Remington, a 285-pound center. And again, we have markers down. The previous call at the line like that, you'll remember, was a procedure against Clemson. Let's check out the Nebraska coaches with Bob Trumpy. Bob? All right, there's no panic here in the Nebraska booth. That turnover, they were, uh, the Nebraska coaches were surprised that Clemson went with a gap defense so early in the football game. That was the, that's what resulted in the turnover. But they're running their offense now, trying to communicate to the sideline exactly yeah. what the defense is doing. No sweat whatsoever. Let's see if we can't pick something up. All right. <laughs> Didn't we huddle up in front of them? Yeah. We'll see what the should be those are the coaches you hear in the background and now it is first down and five after another five yard assessment against Clemson. Maurer pitches back. Option He's got him. So there's the throw down field. Touchdown Nebraska. Mike Rozier connects with his wing back Anthony Steeles. And Nebraska strikes long and for the first touchdown of the game. Rozier the sophomore tailback looping it into the end zone and Anthony Steeles a walk on from Sacramento California. Cruised all alone into the end zone. That's what happens when you decide we're going to stop the run. Now they were effective in the first drive doing so. In the second drive, Nebraska started being a little more effective. When they were so, they put eight men on the line of scrimmage. When you do that, you can come without a free safety. That time, 
Nobody there. Anthony Steele way beyond the secondary. Simple little pitch and catch. That was all it was, and it goes on the board, and now Nebraska takes the lead, 6-3. to three. Seibel, the extra point kicker, puts it up and good. The 25-yard touchdown pass, the subsequent extra point, and the Nebraska Cornhuskers, after falling behind at the outset of the game after a fumble, come right back and take the lead, 7-3. to three. 6.43 left to play in the first quarter here at the 1982 Orange Bowl, and the Huskers will kick it off when we come back. One more look at the touchdown pass from Roger to Steele. Perfectly set up, perfectly executed. Right over the top of Terry Kennard. 7-3. Beat the All-American, 7-3 it is. Nebraska takes the lead with 6.43 left to play. Don Cricky with John Brody, Bob Trumpy at the 1982 Orange Bowl. Clemson now ready to get the ball back. Nebraska ready to hit it. Kevin Seibel will kick off. He kicks a very high ball, in fact, against Oklahoma. Two of his kickoffs were fair caught by the Sooners. They were that high. The coverage was down. Here's another nine iron shot that carries a yard deep and was so high that Clemson elects not to bring it out. <laughs> Gary Tuttle taken in the end zone. You're telling me that his own men fair caught the ball? No, no. The two Oklahoma players uh -oh. took the kickoffs and fair caught the kickoff. Yeah. <laughs> That's high. That is high. Another one was fumbled. While we have a moment, let's swing back over to Bob Trumpy with the Nebraska coaches. All right, we got a flag on that kickoff. It's going to draw back, but as I said earlier, the Nebraska coaches still staying with their game plan. No sweat whatsoever. We got four of them in here. Two on offense, two on defense. And on offense, they're in contact with Tom Osborne, trying to keep Tom Osborne appraised of one, down and distance information, and two, what the defense is doing. The defensive coaches are primarily talking to the players on the sideline and they have a separate set of communication devices down there on the field so that <laughs> so that they can talk to uh, anybody on the defense or the offense in particular they want to primarily the offensive coaches to Tom Osborne defensive coaches to particular players and you know Don it's so funny that uh, that some coaches prefer to have a headset on keep in close communications we remember James out in the Rose Bowl said I really don't like to I, li I like to coach the coaches. Uh, and Dan Ford, on the other hand, really doesn't like to have much to do with the offense on game day. He won't be in contact with them, but he will be after that defensive group. Just depends which, uh, whether you like apples or oranges. Well, it's worked well both for James and for Danny Ford this year. There's big Dave Remington, the junior from Omaha South High School. And now another kickoff after an offside against Nebraska. Seibel hits it deep again. This time Tuttle takes it to the one-yard line. He turns to the outside. He's to the 20 to the 30 and the race is on as Perry Tuttle takes it out to the 40 yard line. Rodley Lewis finally ran him down. Don you can always tell a great running back even though he's going to be a receiver later on in his career. But at Clemson he's not one of those fellows that runs blindly into a hole as he gets the ball he takes off up the middle. This is where the play is intended to go. He's looking for any crack. He's got great peripheral vision. When he finds it he takes to the outside. He finds a little lack in the containment to the right side. Picks it up, gets it out to the 39-yard line. They've got good field position. 39-yard return, longest of the year for Tuttle on a kickoff run back. And now it's first and 10 for Clemson. High back. Austin. Cliff Austin takes it ahead and gets across the 40. Got about three. Henry Waxter knocked him down. Dr. Tom Osborne, coach of Nebraska, took over after Nebraska's last national championship, which they won here in the Orange Bowl, and they routed Alabama back in 1972, New Year's Day night. And then he retired then after back-to-back -back national titles. Osborne took over in every year as Nebraska teams have finished in the top ten nationally. Every year they've been to a bowl game. He said this is his best club. Now, Homer Jordan, pump fakes, goes in the flat. Jerry Gilliard loses the ball. Gilliard hasn't caught a lot of balls this year, Don, but I can I can think of a few other Clemson receivers who haven't in the past. If you look at Dwight Clark, he was the other side to Jerry Butler, and he's going to the Pro Bowl this year. But I tell you, Gilliard is thought to be one of the best athletes they've had in this school for quite some time. And they're right now they're covering Tuttle very well. He's going to have to come off to his ultimate receiver. Tuttle is way out the top of your screen. That's Gilliard in the slot. Frank Magwood is in as another wide receiver set to the left. Homer Jordan 
quick count goes in the flat. Gilliard goes up and gets the ball. It'll be short of a first down. Jeff Krejci. Strong safety for Nebraska was there to cover, and so the Clemson Tigers come up short in the third down play, and they'll have to punt. They got some punter, Dale Hatcher, a freshman. Clemson played Tulane in the Superdome, warming up before the game. He hit the speakers overhead three times. <laughs> and unload. Very high punt. That had gotten the speakers. They hit the lights. <laughs> Irving Fryer with a fair catch for Nebraska. So the Huskers set to go back on offense after their long sustained drive the last time 44 yard punt. Now with 542 left to go in the first quarter the score stands Nebraska 7 Clemson 3. A load of orange dressed Clemson fans is swept down from South Carolina including that little doll. They're buying tickets if they could from Nebraska people. Premium rates for tickets to this Orange Bowl. Nebraska in the lead seven to three. First down and ten for the Corn Huskers first quarter. Roger Craig left to the ball and doesn't get much as the Clemson defense led by number 45 Jeff Davis their all American linebacker makes the knockdown there is a penalty marker down. Now let's check out the coaches again Bob. All right the coaches here in Nebraska booth a little upset with the Nebraska players are not getting good performance out of a couple of players and said the one guy I won't mention his name but they said that if uh, he doesn't play better they're going to get him on the sideline. The offense is good and doing very very well although they're still trying to run against that gap defense of, of Clemson. They're talking presently now that they're going to throw it outside try to get outside somewhat to loosen up that gap defense. We're trying to listen. Have you ever tried to. Hey, that guy can smoke. He didn't. Rodney was close to a little. He didn't. Well, I tell you, it's pretty tough to make much sense out of a group of coaches in the booth. But I will tell you, if they don't like the execution of their Nebraska team, I'll coach them. I like the way they're playing. And if they have one or two people that aren't playing up to snuff, that means they've got nine doing a fine job. Well, as you know, John, Nebraska's like a freight train. They start to roll slowly, and then they are unbelievable. I've never seen an offensive line like Nebraska's against Oklahoma in the final regular season game. Penalty against the Cornhuskers sets them back inside their 10, first and 16. Too much crowd noise. Well, you know, in, in, in many situations, I think Clemson would have declined that penalty, but when they're as close to the goal line as Nebraska is right now, they're putting them in a position where it's very difficult for them to throw the ball. And a quarterback in a big game like this would be concerned with an interception. And I think it puts them in a much more aggressive position defensively. Normally, when you've got a second and ten, it's just it's much better than first and fifteen. In this case, I agree with it. And they're playing to create some breaks. And when you have second and fifteen on your own seven yard line, uh, you're in a good position to create one. Well, let's see what they go with now. Mar, a very under control quarterback. Good thrower. He's going to put it up from his end zone. On the run, he swings it out, and ball is taken. Doug Wilkening, a fullback, comes out of the backfield. He's knocked down by Jeff Davis. But the Tigers get back some of the lost yardage now. It's going to be second down and 10, a six yard gain on the play. But Jeff Davis is an hombre. He's one of the strongest players in all of college football. Bench presses over 515 pounds. I'll tell you, he can move a little bit. When you start making tackles from sideline to sideline, that's. That's a coach's dream. There aren't many around. 220 pound backer that can bench press 515. He might be the only one of those. <laughs> there aren't many if there's another one. <laughs> Penalty markers down as the Huskers go to the run on second down and 10. And they get the ball out across the 15 yard line. That's it. Corn Husker. <laughs> Couldn't he create the same effect with a little lighter object? <laughs> They're all out there. Oscar's having a little trouble getting hit in all eight here. Marker's going against them on offense with 4.14 to play in the first quarter. But Nebraska leads the game seven to three Clemson struck first and a 41 yard field goal then Nebraska came right down the field on a halfback option pass a 41 yarder Mike Rozier hit his wing back Anthony Steele's in the end zone and Nebraska took the lead that's how it stands now seven to three. 
Big play here to get out of the hole. Third down and six. Third down and six coming up. Water is set back at the five yard line. Tim Childers, the strong safety got it. Tim Childers, the strong safety, came a shoot. Something, something down that very seldom happened. They sent both safeties in on the play. He saw the play get jammed up. He figured there must be an opening to the outside the other way. He tried to make a big play out of a bad situation that came up empty. That's what Clemson's been trying to create. Nebraska now takes the big loss, and their punter comes in. There's Tim Childers, who was a backup player, was only on the scout teams last year. He was the most improved player on the defense this year, worked into a starting job. You saw him there. Clemson gambles on defense and wins. Here's the punt downfield. It was almost blocked. Grant Campbell hits it down, and a fair catch is made on the Nebraska side of the field by Billy Davis. And so Clemson gets it back in good field position after a 37-yard punt. The Tigers have it when we return to the Orange Bowl. In at the third Orange Bowl appearance. They haven't been here for a while. As you see, they were here in 51. And as Coach Frank Howard, the retired coach who coached then says, we humiliated Miami of Florida with a late safety, 15 to 14. <laughs> coach Howard says he retired because of illness. The alumni got sick of him. But he was a great one for 40 years, Frank Howard, and was inducted into the Orange Bowl Hall of Honor this week. Here's Homer Jordan going for the home run. Tom is going for it. Don, so often you sit and criticize a quarterback that throws the ball into the hole when they've got double coverage and a free safety in the middle. But if I have number 22, I'm going to fire it down there five or six times because, as you can see, had it not been for a great play in one hand, he was up above both defenders in a perfect position to receive the ball for six. When you have an, abil an ability like he has, you have to use it even if they are double covering you. That was close. He's a very accurate passer, Homer Jordan, led the ACC in passing, one of the best in the country, completed over 55%. Now he throws on the run, and it took an excellent defensive play by Jeff Krejci to break it up, but it might be interference as the marker's down. Jeff Stockton. He's a, an excellent athlete. You remember his, his brother was in this ball game last year and almost got Florida State a win. Stock still. Let's take a look now at the defensive backs for Nebraska. Three of them are walk ons, believe it or not. Rod Lewis and Rick Lindquist are the corners. Jeff Krejci and Sammy Sims are the deep backs. It's now first down and 10 for Clemson. Whoa, there's the stick. Running hard with the ball was Chuck McSwain, and he's belted at the 25 yard line. By the middle guard Jeff Merrill. There's Rick Lindquist, an academic All-American. Rod Lewis at the other corner, a track man, real good sprinter. Sammy Sims, the monster back, a striker. And Jeff Krejci, who walked down and has done a great job out of Skyler, Nebraska. He saw the play he broke up there. Total yards in the game. Nebraska has 64, Clemson just seven. It's a seven to three game in the first quarter. Nebraska's in the lead. Second and ten. Jordan, the quarterback from Athens, Georgia, who keyed the win. Goes to Magwood, the wing back coming around to block for him. Homer Jordan going back to his hometown, Athens, Georgia. Clemson, the only team to beat last year's national champion, Georgia. The only team to beat Georgia in the last two years. They won 13 to 3 this season. And you can see why why Osborne would be a little concerned with Jordan. The man has quickness, fine throwing arm. Makes decisions and takes off on them. And a good touch, John, on the run, like right now. Here is Homer Jordan, pump faking, takes it himself, and gets down to about the 21 yard line, well short of a first down, so we might see Iguabuike again. Jimmy Williams, the All American defensive end, really a linebacker. He's a stand up defensive end for Nebraska, made the stop. Williams out of Washington, D.C., Wilson High School, 6'3, 220, is the fastest player in the Nebraska team. 220 pounds. And here is Iguabuike. They had a Nigerian kicker the last few years at Clemson, Obed Ariri. And now another comes in 
Igbubuike, who hits from 41 yards, again hits it way up in the air, and he's right on time. Donald Igwebike has put up a second field goal. Good for Clemson. And now the number one ranked Tigers are back to within a point. With a minute and three seconds left to play in the first quarter, it's Nebraska seven and Clemson six. The Enterprise is Goodyear's newest blimp. It's winter headquarters in nearby Pompano Beach, Florida. The pilot is Captain Don Plaskonic, a former University of Miami quarterback who played all his home games right here in the Orange Bowl. Cameraman Al Kamoy. Hovering high over the Orange Bowl on a very, very warm New Year's Day night. Temperature in the high 70s, very high humidity. The best Florida weather you can find in January. It's been great all week. And now, Iguabuike hits a high kickoff downfield. Anthony Steele says no go. And has scored the touchdown for Nebraska. Downs the ball for a touchback. And the Huskers go on offense first and 10. Jeff Stockstill, one of the wide receivers, down being attended to. Well, he got hit when he got that interference call. We can't tell exactly what it is, but we know he has had a hamstring, and uh, those can snap when you get hit in the back like he did. Is pushing on it like that the best thing for a hamstring? I'm not a trainer. <laughs> I, I just know he's hurting right now. Not a trainer, nor intend to be. Here is a handoff up the middle. Looked like a marker came in from off the play. Umpire fired something in there. As the carry goes to the 25 yard line, Mike Rozier was hit by William Perry. Taking a look at Tom, he know he's a little concerned right now, and he always gives you the look of being concerned, but he doesn't agree with the call. Now the official came over and tried to explain what was called on that particular play. People that look at Tom Osborne and I had a chance to play with him for a couple years in San Francisco when he just got started. Uh, they look at him as one who doesn't say very much is very quiet and very businesslike. He's one of the most involved people I've ever met. Some people have a lot of expression but he's got all the emotion you can possibly. Outswing to Bob Trumpy Bob. Yeah, gentlemen, an observation for you. Nebraska very seldom plays football games on grass. Uh, the coaches were concerned about the footing of the players in this Orange Bowl, but actually Clemson is the team that's been slipping. Nebraska's had good footing tonight. Interesting point. Nebraska's played only one previous game this season on natural grass. Clemson plays all its home games on a grass field. Rogier runs the ball on a first down and 20 from his 10 yard line. He got out to about the 14. Jeff Davis again on the staff along with defensive end Bill Smith. Rogier, an all big eight player as a sophomore with 943 yards coming into the game and 6.3 a rush. That sometimes I get a kick out of the concerns that coaches have and uh, being involved for as long as I have. There's always some concern. But when those players get on the Orange Bowl floor and try are both going for a possible number one ranking in the Orange Bowl they could play on pavement and they wouldn't care. Right now Maurer goes on the grass up to his tight end Jamie Williams and that swarm of Clemson defense all over the ball and again a penalty marker comes in after the play a gain of just two yards on the play but a marker came down as Williams went down. Junior tight end Jamie Williams from Davenport Iowa. Took over when All-American Junior Miller went to Atlanta. Pete Williams is the referee. Ball goes against Nebraska again. And the quarter has run out. That is the end of the quarter. As the Clemson Tigers, the number one team in the country, going for the dream season, the perfect season in the national championship, find themselves behind by just one point after the first 15 minutes of play. Nebraska scoring on a halfback option pass. Clemson on two field goals. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl after this. Back at the 1982 Orange Bowl, the Nebraska Cornhuskers leading Clemson 7 to 6. John, both teams have a little problem misfiring here with a six-week layoff. I think so, but I think one surprise is that Clemson's offensive and defensive line, except for one drive, have done at least their own job. And that was a big concern of, concern of force, and I look for them to do a little bit more work as the game progresses because they've kept the ball down in Nebraska's territory. 
and it's very difficult to operate from there. And now Nebraska has to operate from deep in their area, leading the game by one point, opening play of the second quarter. Straight ahead give, and Nebraska firing out behind that big offensive line goes to fullback Bates. And he takes it ahead for a short gain. Nebraska having problems with penalties here in the first half. For the Cornhuskers, once they get that blocking intact, and they have a trap blocking system that just annihilates defensive linemen, usually roll up the big numbers, averaging over 333 yards a game just running the ball. Clemson's defense has only given up four rushing touchdowns this season. They're tough against the run. Third and long, Marr takes a look, and now he takes off. To the 25, and he's thrown back. Level and down at the 22-yard line. Jeff Davis and Danny Triplett make the knockdown. A 10-yard gain on the play, and the punter comes out. Don, I'll tell you what. He did have a sore arm. This little jolt isn't going to help it any. Trying to pick up the first down. He knows he's got to get past this little wall right here. Then pick up about four or five more. Very tough job. They've got a punt. So Grant Campbell is in to punt the ball. One man back deep for Cloud. Boy, what a punt. It's got to be a Hall of Fame punt. Billy Davis back inside his 15 yard line for Clemson comes across the 20 and that's all there is as Anthony Steele's 33 knocks him down a 61 yard punt by Grant Campbell great kickers on display in this one both these teams loaded with all conference and all America talent here's another penalty marker down be a personal foul on the run back with 13 24 left to play in the first half. Texas 14 12 upset of Alabama today certainly projects Nebraska into the national championship picture. Alabama was number three in the nation. In the Sugar Bowl, Georgia is leading Pittsburgh 7 0 in the second quarter. Clemson, the only team to beat Georgia in the last two years. Clemson did that 13 3 earlier this season. And that's how it stands at the 1982 Orange Bowl. Don Crickey with John Brody and Bob Trumpy. A 7 6 count in favor of Nebraska. They scored in a halfback option pass. Two field goals for Clemson. This time the call is going to go against, I believe, Clemson. You might think it's against Nebraska, John. Well, I'm not sure that it isn't. And the officials have not moved the ball yet. So we're going to have to wait and see. But he is concerned. Even the Clemson offense was back down inside their own 10 yard line, thinking the play was going to be called against them. He's getting the explanation, and he certainly doesn't understand it. This is the most exercise we've seen Coach Osborne in some time. 13 24 to go in the first half. Nebraska still holding the one point lead, and we'll be back at the Orange Bowl right after this. Right now, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. With John Brody and Bob Trumpy, Don Crickey at the 1982 Orange Bowl in the second quarter. Clemson has been a dominant team over this season. They've outscored their opposition by an amazing number, 127 to 15 in the second quarter. And they have to try to get the ball moving now as on first down they do. A quick out to All-American Perry Tuttle is good for eight yards. Now that's the kind of play that they can execute even when they are double covered because uh, if Jordan can roll out, get beyond all the pursuit, he can get a straighter angle to the wide receiver. When he does so, there's no linebacker in his face, and he doesn't have to loft the ball over the top. Simple little square out pattern that a defense gives you, and when they do, you should take advantage of it. Well run, well thrown. Tuttle has now caught passes in 32 consecutive games. He brought Jerry Butler, the pro bowler from Buffalo. On his receiving records at Clemson. Here's a pitch back. Running high with the ball is Chuck McSwain. He's ahead for a first down. Now let's find out how the Clemson coaches are doing up in the press box. Bob? 
Don, the Clemson coaches were telling me in the first quarter that Nebraska was stunning a lot, and they were sitting on the hook pattern that they were going to have to try to test them deep and try to loosen up the defense. And this is the period, this is the quarter for adjustment now. They figured out what Nebraska's going to do. Now they see if they can get the offense untracked. Well, we find out they got a first down in that last play. It's first down and 10 now for the orange clad Clemson Tigers at their 37. Tuttle pump fake, and he can really ramble, too. He's a strutter, and Perry Tuttle's ahead to the 43-yard line at about six or seven. But Homer Jordan coming up and making the run. Don, this Tuttle is with a good block. Perfect example. When you're talking about Jordan, you can beat him defensively and still come out on the short end when he executes the way he does. He rolls out on the play. This ball is intended to go to Tuttle the same way on to the other side a few plays earlier. But when Tuttle sees that he can't get the play, he can't get to him. He tries to beat Lindquist deep. He can't do that. Jordan runs on for six. So get down coming up now for Clemson. Homer Jordan, the junior quarterback. First back through, doesn't get a thing. Kurt Heinlein, middle guard. They all he alternates with Jeff Merrill. Danny Ford, you'll remember, took over as head coach of Clemson when Charlie Pell announced just before the 79 Gator Bowl he was going to Florida. A lot of coaches end their careers with bowl games. Danny Ford, then 30 years old, coached his first game as a head coach in a bowl game. And that night, Clemson beat Ohio State 17-15. You recall that was a night Coach Hayes lost his decorum very briefly. Done a big job at Clemson. About two feet to go for a first down. They're down. Jeff McCall gets the call and he gets up to about the 48 yard line. Looks like he has it. Not on the last two plays, it's looked like there was nothing there. But let's credit the offensive line for Clemson. You know, Fisher Farr, Barry Hill, Clark, Nanny. They've got one All American, another All ACC player. These fellas are good offensive linemen. All right, they're outstanding players. And where a play looked like it was for no game, two, two plays in a row, they picked up seven yards. That's good offensive movement. Kendall Alley. Now the game is a wide receiver set to the left. Frank Magwood to the right. They're going to Magwood. He dives at the ball and loses it at the 39 yard line of the Huskers with 10.47 to play in the first quarter. Steve Dam Kroger on the play. A long line of Dam Krogers have played at Nebraska. His father, his brother Maury. Frank Magwood comes off the field. Plays coming in with the wideouts for Clemson. Second and 10. Wexter, big six foot six inch, 270 pounds senior from Epworth, Iowa. A top professional prospect comes up from the right tackle and makes the hit for Nebraska on tailback Chuck McSwain. The speed of these guys at 260, 70, and uh, William Perry at 305 is absolutely astounding. And it doesn't stand out because they're all so large. Wait till William Perry's brother comes. He's a sophomore in high school. He's at 285 right now and bigger, taller than William. Homer Jordan throws. Magwood goes for it. The ball is tipped. Yard gainer. Now they're challenging. Are the Clemson Tigers looking to stand that number one ranking at the top of the polls when the bowl games are over? And they're down right now, seven to six. Let's watch that 44-yard gainer again. A tip ball. Very, very tough throw to make. He tries to hit Magwood on the dead run, overthrows him, and actually, if he doesn't get a little help from Sims, the ball will be incomplete. He does at the right time. Second down and eight. Magwood is said to have the best hands on the team. He certainly demonstrated it there. Had pretty good attention. I know that. Looked it all the way in. Second and eight. From the ten. Homer Jordan guns the ball into the end zone. 
Rick Lindquist comes up with the ball. Let's see if he gets it. Ruddle saying he scored a touchdown. Lindquist says he intercepted. This is an interesting dilemma. I'll tell you what happened. The official that had it, he only could see the back of Lindquist, so he couldn't make the call. He referred to the official on the other side of the field. He thought that Lindquist had the ball clean. We couldn't see a thing. I don't know if Coach Ford could see him. He doesn't like it. Well, I know he doesn't like it because he saw the official that was standing closest to Lindquist and his receiver call the play dead. All right, he called it dead. Now, you watch Tuttle come in here and watch Lindquist. That ball is, looks like it's sitting right on Tuttle's stomach, and all of a sudden, when they look up, it's in Lindquist's hands. We don't know whether it hit the turf or didn't hit the turf. Tuttle never had control of it. It looked like it hit Tuttle first. You people at home, take a look, see what you think. We do know when they rolled over, if he had any control of the ball, it was a touchdown, because once you cross the plane of the goal, it's a touchdown. The official ruled it incomplete at first on the right side. And on uh, such things, national championships won and lost. And how well Danny Ford, a former Alabama captain, knows that. We'll come back to the Orange Bowl after this. This play will be in discussion for quite a while. The official who right is, a, is just to the right edge of your television screen could not see the transaction that took place. He called it dead, looked over, and deferred to the other official who called it an interception. And they've got Nebraska running the football. That was a tough, tough call. That very nearly was six points for Clemson, but they lose the ball on the 10th interception of Homer Jordan. Rick Lindquist credited with the interception. The Huskers come out running, and Clemson comes out on defense smacking, and they make the knockdown after a gain of only two yards. Hollis Hall, the left corner, was the first to make the hit. Second and a long seven, closer to eight. Moore on a delay, pitches back to Rozier. Penalty markers, and again, Clemson's defense sweeps in. Knocked down at the 26-yard line. Jeff Bryant, senior defensive tackle. Made the stop for Clemson. While they look over the flag and what happened there, let's go back to the Clemson press box and the coaches. Bob? Don, the reaction of the Clemson coaches was touchdown on the pass reception by Perry Tuttle. There's no argument in the booth. Obviously, they're somewhat prejudiced in their opinion, but uh, they disagree with the statement of John Brody that Perry Tuttle didn't have possession of the football. Obviously, they're going to think that it's a touchdown. A little subdued presently. Well, let me just let me clear something up, Don. I did not say that he that he didn't have possession of the football. I'm saying the official said he didn't have possession of the football. They're in a much better position than I am to see. I don't think he could see, and that's why he deferred it to the other official who had a perfect angle on the play. I couldn't tell if I looked at a replay from now until next month, but I think he was in position to make the call. Well, Nebraska was the beneficiary of the call, and the Cornhuskers now have a problem. Second down and 18. Morrow swings it out, goes to Rogier, and he's hemmed in. But he gets away. Look at this guy go. And then the hit is made by Hollis Hall. If Hollis Hall hadn't made the hit on Rogier, who's got to be a national class sprinter, that could have gone the distance. Like Clemson had him, John, and they lost him. Well, that's what. You look at a man with this kind of ability, and you can have him, but you better get him down on the ground or you're going to lose him. Now he goes right back against the green. The real plus point of the Clemson defense has been pursued. He takes advantage of it by cutting against the green. Hall makes a fine play to hold it for the gain it made. Now third down and seven coming up. To the run and free football, and Clemson say they have the ball. They do. recovery of the year for Jeff Davis the ACC player of the year and Clemson has it back to try and strike again here's the play Bates the fullback carries loses the handle and Clemson comes up with the ball so they have it we come back it'll be Clemson first in 10 with 7 11 to play in the first half 
All right, John, you were right. The angle of the official was correct. Perry Tuttle, in talking to the coaches up here in the Clemson box, said he never had possession of the football. Never had possession of the football. The, the call was correct. It was an interception. Therefore, we go back to the drawing board for Clemson. Well, Clemson goes to the drawing board with a first and ten now after the subsequent fumble recovery. And the Clemson Tigers have the ball at the 27 yard line of Nebraska with the Huskers fourth in the country leading the top ranked Clemson Tigers 7 to 6 7 11 to play in the first half. Everything we expected it to be as they battle for a national championship. Homer Jordan takes a look in the flat he goes to Tuttle puts a move on but he can't elude Lindquist. Rick Lindquist. Three-year starter, about the size of Pat Fisher, another great corner out of Nebraska. All right, Rick Lindquist has made an excellent defensive play. He's one-on-one -on -one with Tuttle, one of the few times you've seen that defense all night long. Makes a fine tackle after he catches the ball. You're sitting with 30 yards of room to handle a man that has the kind of speed and quickness that Tuttle has. You've done a good play right there. He indeed did his job well, Rick Lindquist. Saved a big gainer. It's now second down and about three. They go to the middle. Right up the gut goes tailback Cliff Austin. He's down to the 15 yard line where Toby Williams knocked him down. Big day tomorrow NFL playoff fever continues on NBC Sports with the AFC divisional game starting at 430 Eastern time host Brian Gumbel examines the teams in the playoffs on NFL he won then John Brody and I will be here as the San Diego Chargers with the NFL's number one offense take on the AFC Eastern champions the Miami Dolphins under coach Shula right here in the Orange Bowl that's tomorrow starting at 430 Eastern time here on NBC Sports the Dolphins with their great great defense it's gotten better and better as the season wears on and now Clemson goes hard to the run and Kevin Mack a small fullback but very quick 185 pound fullback takes it ahead. Dan Kroger makes the knockdown for Nebraska, but it's at the 10 yard line. Real good offensive line movement on the last few plays, Don, and they've had it in the last seven or eight offensive plays. They really are. Clemson starting to come off the ball. They're all conference center. Tony Berry Hill, their All American tackle, Lee Nanny at the lower right of your screen. 77. There's another free ball, and Nebraska says they have the ball. <laughs> we do want to get the officials to confer. <laughs> concur. It's a very human night. We haven't seen the last of the fumbling. A little slick on that ball. Jeff Merrill, the big middle guard from Huntsville, Alabama. Somehow Nebraska got him away from the bear. Let's see who has it. We still haven't had it. Well, Merrill had it when, it when everything was over. However, that was about a minute and a half after the play was dead. He definitely causes the fumble. That's Henry Waxter causing the fumble. He's down on the ground. It looks like it's right under. Surely looked like a fumble, but. Clemson's keeping its offense in the game with 5.05 to go, and they'll be going from scrimmage when we return to the Orange Bowl. Nebraska on the halfback option past their second possession continues to hold the lead over Clemson's two field goals. It's a 7 to 6 game. All right, Clemson's going to take a big chance here. This play, quarterback draw by Homer Jordan. Try to get it in the end zone. Let's see what happens. Quarterback draw. <laughs> like that. Rob says that that is a chance but if I was going to take the chance I'd like to have number three with the ball in his hand. He's a stepper there's no question about that Homer Jordan is very very fleet. Tiger paws all over Miami Florida. QB draw coming up third and four. Split the line there it is. Down to the five yard line it looks like a first down for the Tigers. Not one quarterback in 25 could have picked up a first down on that play. He was met at the line of scrimmage, went forward for four or five more yards, just enough for a first down. It looks like a separation, but real good defensive play converged on it. A Henry Waxter in the middle is no, no easy task to get by. He did so and picked up the first down. 
Most of them have been down there. Nebraska hasn't given up many touchdowns this year. In fact, they went a period of 22 quarters in midseason without giving up a TD. It's five and a half games. Now Clemson's looking for its first touchdown of the night. And if the Tigers get it, they'll go into the lead in their pursuit of the national championship. Top-ranked Clemson trailing Nebraska 7-6. to six. Kevin Mack, the quick fullback, took it to the two-yard line. It's second and goal from there. Don Crickey with John Brody and Bob Trumpy at the 1982 Orange Bowl on NBC. Clemson and Orange, the number one team in the country. Unbeaten, untied, going for the distance if they can beat Nebraska tonight. The national title. Pitch back. Touchdown, Clemson, as Cliff Austin struts in, standing up. choosing he was stuck in an elevator for an hour and 45 minutes he had to lose some weight in there John because it was about 85 today in Miami with temperatures and humidity about equal he was stuck in there with a member of SLED the South Carolina Law Enforcement Department they both came out they come out of a sauna for a couple of days I can understand that all right good offensive line play forcing the linebackers to make the play the quarter in pursuit had no angle to make it. So Cliff Austin, as you see, was the leading touchdown scorer running the ball for Clemson during the regular season. And Coach Ford, who played for the Bear and was captain of the 1969 Alabama team. You know, so there are so many people that you, you put a coach in a certain situation and say, well, what kind of coach is he? Good coach, bad coach. And there are so many different types of outstanding coaches. Here's a fellow that was ready to be a head coach when he was 29 years old. Very few people get that kind of opportunity. His players requested it. He's shown that their faith was well, well justified. And he is a game coach. On the, on the field, the day of the game, he's the sort of fella that can help you on the sideline and get the things done that have to be done to win big ball games. And excellent coaching thus far in the game. That was a very well conceived drive, including the quarterback draw. Then the pitch back to the tailback. And now Clemson looking to take a two point conversion. And here's a throw and incomplete. So the numbers stand at 12 7. Clemson going for a 14 7 lead. That was their first touchdown. They hit their first two field goal attempts. Now they score the touchdown. And this two point conversion try. And it's a 12 7 game. The number one Tigers are in the lead when we come back. And the Goodyear blimp cruises high over the Orange Bowl on this New Year's Day night as the Clemson Tigers, after getting the fumble recovery, take it out into the end zone with Cliff Austin going in standing up. And it is now a 12 to 7 lead for Clemson over in fourth ranked Nebraska. 356 left to play in the first half, and the Tigers are ready to kick it off. Donald Igwebuike, the Nigerian who put up Clemson's first six points and two field goals, kicks off. Once again, he gets all of it. Rogier, four yards deep, is counseled not to bring it out. Homer Jordan needs a little oxygen after he's been doing a lot of running around. I tell you, you know, when you're playing in this kind of heat, 77 degrees at, at game time, and the humidity has been some severe. And he ran the ball as often as he's had to run it. Even when he's thrown it, he's run it 15, 20 yards. Okay? It makes it very difficult on your respiratory system. Yeah, I'll tell you. Well, it was 77 a kickoff, John, with humidity. It's got to be higher than that. The sun's been out all week long. It's been gorgeous weather in Miami as the Nebraska Cornhuskers go on the offense, and their quarterback, Mark Maurer, calling his own number, takes it out to the 25 yard line. Got about five on the play. It'll be second down and five. Maurer is a senior from St. Paul, Minnesota, 6'1", 186. He started the season at quarterback. 
Huskers lost two of their first three. A young man from Fort Worth, Texas, Turner Gill, took over. Did a great job, but then he went out with an injury that has him out of this game, and Mowers back in. He was against Oklahoma when Nebraska played its best game of the season. Roger Craig brings into open field and comes across the 35. All right, we've seen Clemson. They've gambled a lot. They've been successful more than more than not. They, I think they've done the right things on most occasions. This time they fake a blitz, and when they pull out, Nebraska finds a hole. The secondary has a little trouble pursuing, and he picks up a first down. You can see the secondary really isn't the linebackers weren't jumping into the holes. The secondary was soft moving backwards first down. First down it is for Nebraska. Pitch back. Eye back. Roger Craig to the 40 and the 45. And he's not done until he gets to the 48. Anthony Rose that big at 5'9", 170 number 21 made the tackle on number 21. And you see the game clock down to 252. We mentioned that Nebraska had lost its two of its first three games. They lost 10-7 to Iowa in the opener, and then they lost 30 to 24 in the third game to Penn State. Then they've been great ever since. Somebody asked Tom Osborne what the difference was, and Tom Osborne said the difference is we quit playing <laughs> Iowa and we quit playing Penn State. <laughs> it could have some effect, but they did play a very tough schedule. I don't think uh, Clemson uh, just slid in there on uh, with nobody in the house because beating Georgia 13 to three. I don't care how you do it. You're a top team. I'm a little surprised they weren't farther up the polls earlier in the season than they were. Well, they both compiled their excellent records, John, against winning teams. Nebraska's opponents won 59% of their games, and Clemson's opponents 54% during the season. At the Sugar Bowl, they're at halftime, and Georgia leads Pittsburgh 7 to 3 at halftime. As you know, there is no halftime quite like an Orange Bowl halftime. Executive Director Dan McNamara. And his group put on a show that's unequaled. And it's, they outdid themselves again this year. Get on board the USA. That'll be coming up at halftime here at the 1982 Orange Bowl. Right now, we've got some time to go, and Nebraska looking to get back on the board. Trailing in the game, the top ranked Clemson 12 7 with 2.52 to play. Pitch back. Danny Triplett, number 82, inside backer, put the slug on. Now, you remember at the outset, we. We put the question up can Clemson really play with Nebraska in the line I think they've proven conclusively that they can and Dan Triplett has made three outstanding plays right at the line of scrimmage right in the middle of the line he's the linebacker goes right through the gap stops the play before it gets to the line of scrimmage it'll now be third down in about a half a yard to go Dan I think Triplett, yep yep that much to go as they bring out the markers they'll check it out Triplets played good football. The junior from Boone, North Carolina, but the guy next to him is maybe the best around. Jeff Davis, the slammer. He'll slam that door. Tomorrow, NFL playoff fever continues on NBC Sports with a top AFC divisional playoff game. The San Diego Chargers, Air Coriel with Diane Fouts at the controls, come into the Orange Bowl to go against Don Shula's Dolphins and what is turning out to be one of the great defenses in pro football. And you will see a battle. San Diego's offense and Miami's defense are something to watch. NFL 81 begins at 4.30 tomorrow afternoon here on NBC. Third inches for Nebraska. Roger Craig gets the first down and plenty more. He's a tough customer, big Roger Craig, a 6'2", 220-pound junior from Devonport, Iowa. And he can go a 4-5 sprinter in the 40. He's run from scrimmage for 94 yards and a touchdown this season. Okay, an excellent play. Craig has made two or three today, and he's best going to the outside, and he gets there so fluidly. They move the left side of the defensive line of Clemson's off the line of scrimmage. When they do that, it's nothing but run. Now Nebraska moving, but time working against the Huskers. 2-14 left there down to the 45-yard line of Clemson. Clemson's in the lead 12 Rivers. to 7. Anthony Steeles who scored Nebraska's touchdown on the pass reception. Can't find a flat track and down he goes. Nebraska has all three timeouts remaining as they're down inside two minutes now. 154 to go. Huskers in no apparent hurry. Second down of 15. Lots of time. Remember, when you make a first down in college, they stop the clock until you get the change move. They've got nothing but time to work with. 
I think at 137 right now as Maurer takes a look and dumps it off. That stops the clock with 134. Get him on the ground. That was grounding, and you generally get away with it. And it looked like the kind of play where Maurer had convinced the officials that it was not grounding. And I really believe that the official, the head official, overruled the, the flag. That seems to be the case because there very definitely was a flag on the field. But right. when there's this many people, Don, sitting in your face, you can throw it, and it's pretty hard to read what's going on in a quarterback's mind. He may have turned to throw to a halfback coming out who fell down. It's pretty hard to determine whether he intended to ground it or intended to find a receiver. And uh, to be a mind reader, I think you have to be a little more certain than that. We have no mind readers here that we know of. <laughs> now Maurer has his team third down 14 right at the 50 he's going to gun it long he's got people running deep patterns there's the home run ball Todd Brown's going for it oh the game of inches and the inches one there very close to a touchdown this ball is laid up and Todd Brown made an excellent play kept his attention on the ball the whole way. Good touch on the pass just very well covered by the secondary for Clemson. Almost got a tip uh, similar to the tip that Magwood got earlier in the game Don. You keep your attention on a ball like that and you're going to pick up a lot of a lot of bobbles. Todd Brown's caught a lot of balls this year not that many numerically but for big yardage 20 yards of catch and he's caught him in tight situations. Look at this. They go. They try to snap to the up back. Punter never got the ball. There's a penalty marker down again. Tom Osborne and the Huskers going to their bag of tricks with very little success. Now Clemson's going to get the ball in very good position. You bet. That's a turnover they may they may regret. How many times has Osborne been effective doing the same thing, however? When that play doesn't work, it really looks silly. I want to check that one out again. 121 left to go in the first half. Pete Williams, the referee. The offside signal was against Clemson, but it was really Nebraska that was offside. And so the play goes, and Nebraska gives up the ball to Clemson. Tigers have it first and 10 at their 49 yard line. 121 to play in the first half and Clemson leads 12 to 7. Cliff Austin has been in the end zone once. Doesn't get far that time to the 50. Godowski knocked him down. The Clemson Tiger, the mascot, does push ups every time the Clemson scores. He does a push up for every point they scored. So the last time they scored, he did 12. <laughs> they say he was a worn out Tiger after the Wake Forest game. Good job. All right, they've got less than a minute to play, and Clemson only has one time timeout remaining, Don, so they do have to watch the clock. Wake Forest game, Clemson scored 82 points. Homer Jordan takes off. Homer looking for the sidelines, finds it. And the security of his mates on the sideline with 42 seconds left to play in the first half. Danny Ford says of Homer Jordan as he plays that's how we play as Homer goes so go the Tigers tried Homer's playing very well he hasn't completed a lot of balls down the field but he spread the defense out he's, he's thrown the things to Tuttle that were open and really I think their defense has been the outstanding phase of this ball game so far but their offensive line is playing very well and I if they continue to do that I think you'll see more operation out of their offense in the flat a strike Harry Tuttle loses it. And the game clock is down to 35 seconds to play Rod Lewis, the right corner for Nebraska, number five, a hard hitting 190 pound corner, made the strike that knocked the ball away. Same pattern we've seen three times today, completed every time. This is for about seven or eight yards, puts them in a position to where if they pick up, well, excuse me, I thought he caught the ball, they, they ruled it incomplete. Lost it out of bounds. Nebraska comes into the game with the number one pass defense in the country. Harry Tuttle running from the wide flank and Homer Jones going to go for it here on fourth down. He calls his own number. Homer gets there. Down to the 38 yard line. Timeout is called. 
don't know if they're going to call timeout now because they can they stop the clock till they get the change plays. They can save some seconds if they're ready. They're on the ball. Yep. Let's go. They are going to go from the scrimmage. Clock starts up and Homer throws it out of bounds. Should be reminded too that that is stopping the clock. That is not trying to throw the ball away to stop a loss of yardage. So therefore, it's not a penalty. They've got one timeout left. 21 seconds left to play in the half. They've got to get the ball. I would say realistically, in to the 30-yard line. But if they pick up three or four yards, their kicker has a chance to make it. That's right. Ariri, who was here last year, was a medium-distance kicker. But this guy, the other Nigerian in there, Igwebuike. Has hit him in practice from 67 yards. I wasn't sure I could say it. That's well, they don't. They call him Donald. I think we'll stick with Donald. Here is Homer Jordan stepping into the pocket. He runs into serious trouble. Better call a timeout now. Nine seconds. Apparently, Clemson's going to take their lead into the locker room. They're trying or to get a timeout call. They only got time for one play. It's going to be an interesting one. Long, if nothing else. Igwebuike is coming out there, John. It'll be about 60 yards if he makes it. The first one he kicked would have been at least for that. This will be a 59-yard attempt. He's a very good holder in Tony Peretti. Igwebuike from Nigeria. He didn't know what a football was when he showed up in the U.S. He was a soccer player and a very good one, still is. Took him out to the football field one day and see if he could kick a football. Kicked it out of sight, <laughs> changed uniforms. He's got the most solid short motion I think I've ever seen. I very little follow through and an awful lot of a lot of action through the ball. Talked to him yesterday, John. Asked if he's made many tackles on kickoffs. Not any. Our front guys get him first, he says. <laughs> and that's fine with Igwewike. A 58-yard attempt. Tipped. I think a Cornhusker got a hand on the ball. It comes up way short, and the first half ends. And so the Huskers of Nebraska head to the locker room, and so do the number one ranked Clemson Tigers. Clemson holding to a 12 to 7 lead. A super spectacular Orange Bowl halftime show is coming up. At halftime, number one Clemson and Coach Danny Ford in front of Nebraska, 12 to 7. Don Quickie with John Brody back at the Orange Bowl in Miami. John, I had a chance to talk to some of the Nebraska coaches, asked them to assess the first half. They said, hey, we're in with a heck of a club. These guys are tough. That's the key. Their defense has really put Nebraska in such a hole that they haven't been able to get out of it except for the one drive. Their def I think the score indicates the, the way the ball game is going. And, and for my money, Clemson has impressed me. They deserve to be number one. Well, Clemson is a lean, tough football team. There's no fat out there. They've been working in the hot weather. And it's showing. They're really looking sharp. First half statistics break down. Not real big numbers, John. I think you have very little to choose between the two teams, and, and it should be. You don't have much to choose in, on the scoreboard either. I don't think either offense has dominated play. Both defenses have played well. Both Oklahoma, uh, Nebraska have had the back up to the wall, and Clemson keeping Nebraska in the hole. So uh, I'm looking for a very active. Uh, second half primarily because Pittsburgh is 10 to 7 at this time and uh, you know that means that the winner of this ball game in all probability would be the number one team in the nation. That's right right now Pittsburgh is leading Georgia in the third quarter of the Sugar Bowl 10 to 7. So if Nebraska now the report Georgia scored so Georgia's taken back the lead. Clemson wins this game they will be national champion they beat Georgia earlier this season 13 to 3 so they have a very resounding win over number two on the record books already. Nebraska beneficiaries of the upset of Alabama today by Texas still with a shot to catapult to the top spot. Right now Clemson is ready to receive as we open the third quarter of play. That's how it looks now at the Sugar Bowl <laughs> in New Orleans 13 to 10. Leads do flee. Yeah, they will change on you. Long way to go in this one now as we're ready to open the third quarter. Seibel is ready to kick off for the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. The Huskers giving up only six points a game in their course of their eight game win streak but already Clemson's put up 12 points in the first half. And Clemson is a hot weather team. They've been working out in Florida for two weeks prior to this game. Seibel unloads and kicks it 
through the uprights. So now as we're set to start the third quarter play from scrimmage, here comes Clemson's quarterback, Homer Jordan, with his runners, Cliff Austin, who scored the touchdown, and fullback Jeff McCall. Harry Tuttle and Gilliard are the two wide receivers. Bubba Diggs, the tight end. Fisher, Farr, Barry Hill, Clark, and Nanny, the offensive front, they've been good. Bright orange, the Clemson Tigers are wearing, and that's all throughout the stands. A lot of red out there, too. The Husker fans down from Nebraska. First down at 10, Clemson. The ball was turning over, you'll remember, in the first half, and we could see more of those. This is a hitting game. Henry Waxter, the right end, making the stop for Nebraska. Defensively, the Huskers have Jimmy Williams, the All-American at left hand, his brother Toby, the left tackle, middle guard Jeff Merrill, Henry Waxter, the right tackle, Tony Felici, the right end. Dan Kroger and Evans are the backers for the Corn Huskers. Lindquist, Lewis, Sims, and Krejci, and they played well. Nebraska's given up only three touchdown passes this season, number one in the nation in total defense against the pass. Running wide and running well for the Tigers is Chuck McSwain. Don, very seldom do you see a fleet of backs on both sides of the line of scrimmage that when they get a little break, just a little angle on the linebacker, they can outrun them to the sideline, pick up seven or eight yards. I've seen six backs in this ball game that can do it. And it is funny, too, we haven't seen an awful lot of Jimmy Williams, primarily because they have not run toward his side as much as they've run away from him, as they did on that occasion. It's not Number, a bad idea to stay I would, him. too. Number 96 is 225 pounds. Runs about a 4 5 40. It's got great, great movement laterally, and uh, everybody that follows Nebraska knows how good he is. Nebraska rolling at the end of the season. The coach of Iowa State, after they were hammered by Nebraska, said there might be better football teams in the country than Nebraska, but if there are, they're all playing in the NFL on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> but right now, Clemson in orange, and number one in the country has the lead 12 to 7. season now moving into 82 turns out to be the biggest game as Clemson goes for a national championship and Homer Jordan throws on the run that it's unbelievable what they asked some players to do but Jimmy Williams that time we mentioned we hadn't seen an awful lot of him that time he was put in an underneath coverage on Perry Tuttle all the way he's picking up Tuttle watch him stride for stride he turns to the outside takes the angle away out of bounds The excitement level record high here in Miami, Florida for this 48th renewal of one of America's great football events, the Orange Bowl. Clemson with second and 10 coming up from their 33. And Nebraska comes out a hitting. Jimmy Williams, 96, who as we pointed out earlier at 6'3", 220, is the fastest player on the Nebraska team. <laughs> He's not only fast, he knows where that football's going. You can tell sometimes by the way they line up. Last time he was one-on-one -on -one out there with Tuttle. This time he's one-on-one -on -one with a running back. Clemson has averaged over 400 yards a game offense this season, but it has only 118 today. But they do have the lead, 12 to 7. And Nebraska's <laughs> offense has been shut down at 333 yard a game, rushing a juggernaut of the Corn Huskers. Unable to generate consistent offense tonight against Clemson. A team that is lean and swarms to the football. This time the marker is signaled against Clemson. Ball goes back to the 23. Holding. Homer Jordan was second to his teammate Jeff Davis in the ACC battling for player of the year. He set a Clemson passing record, number one in the ACC overall in passing. He's going to be a tough guy to hold back next year. He's got a season to go. But only 1,500 yards to pass Steve Fuller as the all-time yardage leader, and uh, I think he'll do it. Clemson on second and long, goes to the run, but Nebraska's ready. Brent Evans shuts it down with 13.40 to play in the third quarter. The Tigers of Clemson coming into this game as an underdog, but that was just fine with Coach Danny Ford and his players. They were loose and they were confident all week long getting ready for Nebraska. Really, they're like a couple of heavyweight fighters coming up to a championship fight. Six weeks of work since their last game. 
What it really turns out to be is a fight for the national championship. Third down, and you see 16 for Clemson. Homer sets himself. Nothing there, but he gets away, does Homer Jordan. Another penalty marker comes in from off the play, John. Well, when a guy like Jordan gets loose, everybody wants to help out. And uh, I'm not certain of the call, but I do know had it not been called, he'd have picked up a first down. It's generally some kind of a crackback block downfield. He makes a super play just to get out of the grasp of the two on rushing Nebraska linemen. Now everybody picks up, starts to help. A lot of football players out here tonight. Nebraska brought down two plane loads. <laughs> they can't even put them all on the. On the they, you know how you talk about three deep sheets? We it's got like a, a phone book. We got an 11 deep sheet. There's 120 players, I think, from Nebraska. 143 because 23 of them came on their own. So uh, I don't know how many Clemson has, but we've got enough for an entire league if we want to start. Okay, one thing, I just hope they don't all play. The assessment against the Clemson Tigers back to the 20 yard line now. And now it brings up a third down and 23 for Clemson. Homer Jordan sprints out and throws, and Gilliard makes the reception. Does a dance and runs into Dan Kroger and knocks him down hard. Nebraska's defense coming out smoking here in the third quarter. Huskers looking to get back the ball. We mentioned so much about Jeff, Jeff Davis, Don, but I'll tell you, Steve Dan Kroger is, uh, has played an equally fine game. The man's been on all sides of the field. He's standing in the middle. They haven't run too much up the middle, so he hasn't been in on too many plays there, but now he's spreading out a little, and you can see by that lick what he passes. Here's Dale Hatcher, the freshman punter, knocking it downfield for Clemson. Alan Lide takes the ball for Nebraska and scoots up the middle across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And there, Nebraska goes in offense, first and 10. 51-yard punt, 11-yard return. Well, return to the Orange Bowl in Nebraska's first possession of the second half after this. Clemson came into existence almost 100 years ago when a man named John Green Clemson up there in the northwest portion of South Carolina gave some land for land grant college an agricultural college and Clemson was born not too far from Athens Georgia where Homer Jordan comes in from. You know where Clemson was John. Sure do. You do now. There's a stick at the line. Bates the fullback as they try a quick trap. That's shut down quickly. Banish 71. Made the knockdown for Clemson. You know, I think all teams fall into patterns, Don. And one of the best patterns that Nebraska's had all year long is in the third quarter, they've outscored their opponents 111 to 23 points. They know right now if they're going to do any good today, they've got to get back in this ball game. They've got to move a very tough defense off the line of scrimmage. Interesting number, though. Now a quick out. Here's Maurer throwing free ball. is up in the air. Anthony Rose says he's got the ball and let's see what the officials say they say incomplete. Third down and eight. Again, we were at a very bad TV angle. coming. Let's watch that again now. We're looking at this play exactly as those people at home are looking at it. Our back is turned. We know the ball is tipped. Bill Looks Smith got it. He tipped it. And Anthony Rose comes up with it, but it's ruled incomplete. Well, all the officials unanimously waved no good at the same time. I've got to think it was right. Interesting call. Huskers go to the run on third down and eight. Mike Rozier is shut down. Observation at the, in the first half, one of the big factors in the football game, I'm in the Clemson box once again, but one of the big, big factors in the first half were the penalties on Nebraska. I have found out that two holding calls were against Dave Remington, the All-American center and Outland Trophy winner. I think it's that predetermined move in the nose manner. The Clemson defense is causing Nebraska great trouble. Grant Campbell ready to punt the ball again for Nebraska. Hits it downfield to the 24-yard line. Here comes Billy Davis, freshman out of Alexandria, Virginia. Takes it to the 24-yard line. 36-yard punt. So Clemson goes on offense again, first and ten. The Clemson Tigers leading 12 to 7. Third quarter. 
All right, Clemson's offense is going to try to open it up a little bit. We've got a bootleg coming here. Homer Jordan, primary receiver, Perry Tuttle, All American receiver, number 22. He'll be at the wide side of the field. And, you know, as Bob mentioned, the wide side of the field, they don't have one in pro football. College football also has a lateral strategy. They're trying to employ it right now, and it looks like a pretty good situation. Jordan, there's the rollout. Tuttle's running downfield, but Jordan gets it off on the run, and he hits Perry Tuttle up to the 38-yard line. First down for the Tigers. 12-yard gain on the play, just, just like they called it. Perry Tuttle made such a fine move. This is the kind of play that he's sitting out there on Lindquist. Check me. That's Lewis. Tries to run him deep, gets him down down the field far enough so that when he comes back he's got the first down well thrown thrown ball by Jordan. Harry Tuttle senior from Winston Salem North Carolina. Clemson goes to the run penalty markers comes in as Chuck McSwain carries the ball not very far and the game clock is down to 10 29 in the third quarter. Jimmy Williams on the tackle Nebraska is the bigger of the two teams physically but Clemson is extraordinarily strong they place a premium on weight training. <laughs> Very lean, and here's a call going to go against the Tigers, John. They've had a few go against them. This is their fifth penalty today, and uh, the third one in the second half. So uh, they do have a tendency to stop your drives. You know, it was interesting that Bob, when Bob, when Trumpy mentioned that uh, Remington had a couple of penalties called on him, because you know they have a situation uh, where the the officials get together with the producers and uh, and some of the of the broadcasters. And I, Dan Ford, got right in the officials' ear. And when he started talking to the officials, he was asking questions about Remington. Can a center ever be offside? Because make sure you make sh the right guys offside. I don't know if it had any effect, but it's, it's funny that here's two called on David. Now they go second and eight. Back to the short side of the field. Oh, free football. Former Jordan Gamble's trying to get it back to his tailback, Chuck McSwain. Clemson is fortunate the ball goes out of bounds with 10 6 to go in the quarter. All right. That's the chance you take once you get past the line of scrimmage. Some people are a little reluctant to give a quarterback leeway to throw the ball back to his trailing halfback. That time he was in front of the of uh, Jordan and uh, the pitch back fortunately went out of bounds for Clemson. Nebraska has turned the ball over twice in this game Clemson once. Tuttle comes back at the ball and turns up field. And Tuttle's ahead for another big gain or another Clemson first down, a 16 yard gain on the play. <laughs> you know, we'd heard so much about Tuttle that generally you're disappointed when you see a man that's had as much recognition as Perry Tuttle has. But this man was underestimated, in my opinion. He gets out there with the quickest speech you've ever seen, great speed. And Lindquist is doing an excellent job. They put the responsibility on him when he's in his zone going the other way. Where he's got him one-on-one -on -one for all purposes, and it's tough to come out on the strong end. Now it is first down. And up goes straight ahead and McSwain. Blocking the call carrying. He gets the ball down to the 36-yard line of Nebraska. And the game clock winds down to 9.48 to play. 12 to 7 is the score. That's how it stood at halftime. No scoring yet in the third quarter as the number one team in the country, the Clemson Tigers, look to complete the perfect season with a national championship win tonight. Clemson had one other 11 and 0 year. That was back in 1948, but the polls ranked them no higher than fourth at season's end. Second down and three. Up the middle. The yard's coming tough, but Jeff McCall makes the carry for a first down. Very close to it. Jimmy Williams' brother Toby made the play, but you'll notice, Don, that their line back is playing a little more off the line of scrimmage. They've got to employ a little deeper pass coverage, and those little short outs that they were given in a Tuttle early in the ball game have an effect on your running game to keep the linebackers a little more in pursuit of the receivers rather than the running backs. And I like the way they're mixing it up right now. See that Danny Ford, the youngest Division I head coach. Games like this will age you some, though, and right now, Ford and his Tigers are up front, 12 to 7. 
Homer Jordan on the rollout throws a strike. His tight end comes back at the ball. Bubba Diggs. Big guy from Atlanta, seven yard gain. The secondary from an up high picture. You can see the linebackers quite a bit off the line of scrimmage. How, however, Jordan still able to roll left. You see the tight end sitting right out in the open. You have to be able to spot him. Jordan spotted him, hit him just short of a first down. They're using everybody in the, in the 11 man lineup very effectively. Two wide receivers set to the right now as Clemson keeps moving the ball up the middle. Look at that hit. Clemson Tiger first down as Brett Evans knocked him down. Right, get some credit to that offensive line too. I mean, Nanny, Brian Cook, they're moving people off the line. Of, Brian Clark are moving people off the line of scrimmage. Barry Hill moved his man off the line. The linebackers are hitting you four or five yards past the line. You're doing a great job in the offensive line. And right now, John, the Huskers want to regroup. They've called a timeout. Their defensive unit wants to talk it over. So with 8:05 to go in the third quarter. Clemson is marching and leading the game 12 to 7. <laughs> All right, still in the Clemson booth. This next play coming up is going to be a featuring the fullback going to the right side of the offensive line. John Brody. Well, let me tell you this, Bob. If they feature the fullback going to the right side of the line, look at Lee Nanny. An All-American tackle who's played exceptionally well, particularly in the second half down, and uh, their whole offensive line is doing a job right at this point. They are. They're coming off the ball like champions. Moving out like they heard the starter's gun. And Clemson is playing a great football game. They are the number one team in the country, at least so far tonight. Pushing ahead is close to a touchdown as he comes inside the five-yard line. Okay, they fooled him a few times. 77, 70. Brian Clark, great block. Barry Hill, great block. Back just has to run through the hole, picks up another first down. I mean, this offensive line is about as pumped up against a fine defense as I've ever seen. They are doing a great job against a Nebraska defense that was one of the best in the country. As we mentioned, they went 22 quarters, did the Cornhuskers in one stretch without giving up a touchdown. It's five and a half games. McSwain takes a read at the defense and moves to the outside, but not with much luck as he got ahead for maybe a yard, but he did advance the ball inside the five yard line. It'll be second and goal from there. As the game clock is down to 7.24 to play in the third quarter, and Clemson continues to lead 12 to 7. Okay, this drive has consumed quite a few minutes, but I think the indicative thing is that Clemson has picked up 12 first downs to Oklahoma's five. Now that's controlling the game. When you have the ball, it's pretty hard for anybody. Nebraska, <laughs> excuse me, I said the wrong group. Nebraska's had five. Sweep right. No such luck. That time Nebraska comes up with the big play. You also have to wonder, John, if the heat and humidity is going to play to Clemson's favor as this game wears out. It's a hot, warm night. Very humid here in Miami and a little brisk this time of year where the Huskers have been I, practicing. I think it very well could play, have, uh, be a factor. This time it's excellent pursuit. Jimmy Williams is buying none of that heat. And he, he drops McSwain for about a seven or eight yard loss. Very big play at a critical time. It was a very critical play. Third down coming up third and goal for the Clemson Tigers from outside the 15 lofted into the end zone. Perry Tuttle touchdown Clemson. Execution, Don. Just great execution by a fine receiver. Excellent quarterback. Put the ball right where it had to be. It was a super throw. He had the wide receiver, the All-American one-on-one, -on -one. and it 
was no match as the Clemson Tigers extend their lead to 19 to 7 with 612 left to play in the third quarter. Here's Homer Jordan lofting the six pointer and one on one coverage is a very difficult assignment for any defensive back particularly when it's Perry Tuttle. Bob Pauling gets the point after and Clemson extends its lead now to 19 to 7 612 to go in the quarter. Let the good times roll on the Clemson sideline. Oh, it was such a, it was a well-run pattern. It was a beautifully thrown ball, and I'd, I'd hate to have been Alan Lyday. He's sitting in one-on-one -on -one coverage with half the field to handle. He really covered him pretty well. Had very little case. When you're a receiver that, that has the ball thrown to the outside, he's kept your eyes off it until the last moment, comes down with a great catch, puts him in a two-touchdown lead. 19 to 7 advantage. Barry Tuttle with five receptions tonight. Igwebuike kicks off to the goal line, and here come the Huskers. Rozier busts it up the middle and gets to the 30, a 30-yard return. And now Nebraska might have to do some pitching to get back in this game as they trail 19-7. You remember Mark Maurer had an excellent game in the last game of the season against Oklahoma. He hasn't thrown the ball very much today. They haven't moved the ball very much today, but uh, I think he, he's going to be called on right about now. We saw a wild ending here last year as Oklahoma rallied to come from behind and beat Florida State 18-17. Our rolling out can't get the ball. He's looking for his wide receiver Todd Brown. Jeff Suttle defending. Mauer had a brilliant game throwing the ball and directing the offense in the win over Oklahoma. Didn't throw it a lot. He usually puts it up about 12 times a game as a 50% thrower. We did mention he is troubled by a sore shoulder early in practice, but was running the ball well last night. Rozier. Well, that's 45. Again, is on the stop with 5.48 to play in the third quarter. Right now, if Nebraska's going to get back in this ball game and have a realistic chance of winning it they've got to do, do it against a team that's pumped up knows what they're playing for and is playing right at the top of their game. And as this game wears on in the heat of South Florida Clemson's defense seems to be getting faster and tougher and now they almost come up with the ball again. If it's wearing a white shirt it's going to get hit out there. Clemson is sky high. These guys are jacked up 10 feet in the air. God, it's just like throwing the ball out of a 20-foot well. You've got this many people from Clemson yelling for a group that's playing as well as they are. You've got to make something happen if you're the, if you're the Nebraska quarterback in order to quiet it down and get something operating. Grant Campbell, who hit 161 yards, punts now, and Billy Davis comes up with the ball at the 31, moves through a crowd. Turns the corner, blockers are there, look out! 40, 30, down to the 22-yard line. is a, a composite effort. You look at a wall. Have you seen a wall formed any better than that one was? Once he breaks the point of attack, two yards after he gets the ball, he's got excellent downfield blocking. He, it looks like he's cutting into, into the traffic, but really he got the most out of the play. He sure did. A 48-yard return, and now here's a pitch back. Cliff Austin runs it inside the 20. And Clemson, with its exceptional conditioning and muscle, is putting the knockout punch on Nebraska right now. It is a 19-7 game with 4.50 to go in the third quarter. Game clock winding down, and Clemson moving out of the huddle, deploying two men to the left. Tuttle, who just caught the touchdown pass, and the sure-handed Frank Magwood is in the slot to the left. Second and seven. High back. Nothing there. A hard.
hard hit put on by Jimmy Williams, the All-American, 96, and a penalty marker down also. Pete Williams, our referee, interesting guy. He was a fine runner for the U.S. Naval Academy back in the 40s. Here he is in action in 48 against Army in a great Army-Navy matchup. I believe ended in a scoreless tie. It's Pete Williams, the referee, when he was playing college football. These days, he has his own business that builds bridges. <laughs> he likes action. He says refereeing is a lot tougher than building bridges. That's like getting hit by the Clemson defense. Pile driver. And Pete Williams. Steps back into his striped shirt and goes back to work as the referee of the 1982 Orange Bowl on NBC. Don Quickie with John Brody and Bob Trumpy as the number one team in the country. The Clemson Tigers have extended their lead to 19 to 7. Second down and 19. Throwing out. Jerry Gilliard from Yuma, Arizona makes the play for Clemson. Look at that, Clemson soda. Well, when you've got a guy like Tuttle on the other side, you don't get it thrown to you very often. And when your number's called, you better get open. Gilliard made an excellent move to get open in between the secondary. Came up just a little short of the first down. It's third down and three. And look at that score, Craig. Pittsburgh has come back, taking the lead over second-ranked Georgia, 17-13. Here at the 1982 Orange Bowl, we have three minutes and 23 seconds left to play in the third quarter. The clock is running in Clemson in orange, number one of the country, opening up a 19 to 7 lead. Maryland, long time ago, the last ACC team to win a national championship in college football. Well, the whole world's finding out what Clemson's all about here tonight. They are number one, and they are good. We'll be back after this. We're still in the Clemson booth, and we were hoping you could hear some of the coach's comments, but we're deciphering them for you. In this particular okay. play, Perry Tuttle starts yeah. in the right, goes yeah. motion to the left, and yeah. Homer Jordan is going to roll out as the option okay, to run or pass, depending on the coverage. And Tuttle is the hot receiver so far. You know the match? Yeah. He knows about. We told him that. He better match. Come on, Butcher, do it again. Let's see. We're running away from Williams. We'll be at the other boy now. That's right. Come on, That's Butcher. Want to spin on. I think we've been getting him down with a match call. He might be closing. The only thing is, we've got Lincoln over here and uh, Lewis to the other side. Yeah, we can't, yeah, he's hurt. He's left a little bit. Yeah, they're going to corner on, the, on, on our left. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's see Perry Tuttle if he does indeed roll out. And here comes Perry Tuttle in motion. He looks oh. good. Yep. There's Hoban Jordan sprinting, pumping, and getting some problems. Tony Felici, a defensive end from Omaha, number 46 for the Huskers, makes the stop. Look, he walk out and worked his way to a first team status. Look good, work bad. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Felici. Huskers come from all over, though. Middle guard, Jeff Merrill from Huntsville, Alabama, is back up Kurt Heinlein from Bellevue, Washington, the Williams brothers from Washington, D.C. But there are also a lot of neighbor of Cornhuskers on this team. A high spinning field goal attempt. 36 yards away is up and good. Bob Pauling kicked that one. He kicks the shorter one. Nick Wigwe is the kicker. Yeah, I think if I had a guy like him, Don, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be alternate kickers. They've done it during the season, but they're going with equal week K throughout the game. He's put up three field goal attempts, and he has hit all three. And Clemson, laying further claim to a national championship, has moved in front of Nebraska 22 to 7. Clemson has been rolling the last half of the season. In the last six games, the Tigers have averaged over 450 yards a game offense at 33 points. They didn't expect to score a lot against Nebraska. Here to be from the form chart, a low scoring game, but right now Clemson's putting up the numbers. And what's equally impressive, Don, is the fact that, that Nebraska scored 111 points in the third quarter. The only team they didn't score against was.
Missouri. They've only got 236 to score against Clemson. 236 left to go in the third quarter, though. A lot of time remaining. As Igwe Bike. I am from Miami. <laughs> How you doing, pal? Better check out where you're going, Kim. Bauer takes a look, throws it over the middle, intercepted and lost. Johnny Rembert had a clear track to the end zone had he been able to hold on to that ball for Clemson. Tell you, when you see a fella this big as Rembert is, moving like he does, Maurer's in a position where he has to throw the ball. You see a man six foot four, six foot five, moving like that in the secondary. That's impressive. Can't tell me Clemson's small. Oh, Clemson is big and lean and strong. Rembert, 6'3, 220, a running linebacker. And handoff goes to Roger Craig, who ran well in the first half, and he gets the ball ahead to the 24 yard line before defensive end Joe Glenn beat him. Clemson does well in orange pants, the record shows. <laughs> Only three times they wore them other than tonight. They're doing they well. probably play without them. Yeah, that's right. But these guys in swimsuits. Well, Tom knows he knows he's in a situation right now where they have to make something happen. They're pulling out all stops. Those Nebraska blockers, big and strong as they are, are running into a impenetrable wall in the Clemson defense. They just shut down the blocking and stuff the run. They would love to be in a position where Dave Remington, number 50, the center, the Island Trophy winner, Playing on William Perry could use the strength that he has and make it effective for them to be in a position to win the ball game. But they've got to move it down the field a little faster than they'd like to be able to. Now they put Devane at middle guard. They're trying to wear Remington out. I'll tell you one thing, Remington is something coming off the ball. It's like getting hit by a concrete truck. They had 283 pounds, the kind of speed and quickness that he has. Little Tiger fan, not quite sure what he's celebrating, but knows something's going on. Clemson has 13 first downs this half. Nebraska but six. Dave Remington, all 285 pounds. Watch him come off the ball. Mark Maurer runs and Jeff Davis strikes. This is one of the great players in America, number 45 on Clemson, the All-American linebacker with the super strength. The young man we mentioned earlier who bench presses over 500 pounds, 515 to be exact. I've seen Nebraska run that option play, and I've seen him run, run it effectively. And the way you do so is you beat a linebacker like Jeff Davis and keep him from running sideline to sideline, which no one has been able to do all night. Jeff was the guy John said before the game he's tired about all this talk. <laughs> What's Clemson? Where's Clemson at? So we're going to show him where we're at tonight. We're number one. Here comes Roger Craig on third down. 
and only a yard he drives ahead to the 39 yard line he has a first down for Nebraska and he hadn't knocked him down for Clemson that'll do it for the third quarter Black runs out coach Danny Ford 33 years old like the man who coached him Bear Bryant who's had so many national champions might be joining the bear in that national championship Gentlemen, an observation from the Clemson coaching booth. The co coaches in here, all seven of them, feel sure fired that there's no way that Nebraska can score 15 points on the Clemson defense. No matter what they try, they don't believe they can score 15 points against this defense. They feel they have control the line of scrimmage all for this entire game, and there is no sweat for the rest of it. They're just waiting for the champagne. Well, we'll see. I think that, Bob, what you were saying, which is so pertinent, is they won't change any defensive strategy. There's a play fake, and they go out, and they make the strike to the tight end, Jamie Williams. They go to the tight end. We'll be checking in right along now with the Clemson coaching box. So here in the background will be the Clemson assistant coaches, a spirited and well-prepared group. One tight, one tight. Tight in the light. Come on now. Let's have our big play now. Hey, Bo. All right, tell, you know, tell Tony to come back without nothing. Make sure he sails out. Overset. Overset. Go ahead and get over here with him. Make sure he sails out. Cut, turn it up. Avoid contact. First and ten, Nebraska. Let's go. 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 let us that was our big play. They watching the quarterback then. Who? Okay. Hey, hey, Steve. Throw back. Throw it back at that quarterback. Now come out of there. Hold that reverse. He come out and kept going. Check the quarterback. Now you think they're not worried? Yeah. Well, he was checking. What they were alluding to is that after he handed the ball off, the quarterback okay. continued on, and he's concerned that he wasn't watched sufficiently. And they said, Hey, now wait. Make sure you watch that quarterback after he reverses the ball. So it comes to second and ten for Nebraska. Roger Craig breaks it for the moment, comes inside the 45-yard line, and the omnipresent Jeff Davis knocks him down. Davis on the tackle. You guys are number one. You know, that's a so far job. I've seen Nebraska play too well in the third and fourth quarter. I've seen him play too well all year. For them not to think, as much as Clemson's staff thinks, they think they can score two touchdowns. And they're taking it very methodically. They're moving down the field once in a while, a little trick play. But they don't think this baby's anywhere near over. Well, we've got a lot of time left. 13.40 to play. Third down and four. Moore arcs it up. Todd Brown catches the ball. But they say he got it out of bounds. Incomplete and fourth down and four comes up. Jeff Suttle was defending. Okay. Terry Kennard really played the ball pretty well. It looked as if Todd was open. It looked like he could have stayed in bounds. He could not. The ball had to be thrown where it was, or Kennard had been made the play. This year, the Clemson defense held 10 of its first 11 opponents to under 10 points. Not many expected they do it against this high power Nebraska offense, but so far they have. 22 to 7 is the score. Clemson is in the lead with 13.35 left to play in the game. Jeff Davis comes off, and we'll come back after this. The San Diego Chargers are the NFL's number one offensive team, but the Dolphins haven't drowned yet. They're coming on strong tomorrow. Plus Sunday, the Buffalo Bills take on the red-hot Cincinnati Bengals. The sports ticket for great NFL action. Don Crickey with John Brody and Bob Trumpy back at the Orange Bowl. A little earlier we showed you where Clemson, South Carolina was. And there is where Lincoln, Nebraska, capital state, a part of the great corn belt of mid-America, a state that feeds not only much of the United States, but a good part of the world with its vast and advanced agricultural system. Tom Osborne, the coach of the Huskers, with a problem now as his team is down 22 to 7, and Nebraska forced to punt. A high punt hit a Nebraska player, and then they downed it. So Clemson in the lead, 22 to 7, goes back on offense. 32-yard punt. Tiger paws. They're not hard to find in Miami right now. Between 
oranges and orange tiger paws. We got a lot of orange down here. <laughs> you got that right. There might, there might be a party among these people afterwards. They have a good group that's come down the pike down to Miami from South Carolina and their campers. They've come every which way. A lot of football left. Those fellas in the orange jerseys know it. Homer Jordan rolling out. Homer's on the run. That's the 12th man saves him. He gets out of bounds and takes out a couple of footogs. Homer Jordan, who's survived the Nebraska defense now, shaking up, going out of bounds. Let's check in with the coaches again up here in the press box. Watch. Left over far, 52 uh -huh. over. If they come with the press, all right, he's out. He's okay. What you got, Nelson? Kirk, you got it. Okay, we, we see Homer Jordan. The coach wants to put him back in, and, and it's really funny, you know, when, when a player gets injured and they, they, they call timeout, he has to come off the field. I think the concern that Ford had is, hey, he was injured, but by a photographer, a couple of them down there running into them. How can that? How can that be called? A, you see, he runs right into the. It looks to me as if he ran right into the camera, and that's a danger. It is. Glad to see he's all right. Homer Jordan back in. You see, he's run the ball not for a lot of yards, but he's done it at opportune times when he's been trapped and he's gotten away from a lot of corners. They've been hemmed in a few times and gotten out. Passing, he's been superb. 19 throws. He's completed 11 for 134 yards and a touchdown to his All American Perry Tuttle. Second down and six coming up for Clemson from the Tigers 23. Kevin Mack gets ahead. Close to a first down. Hope you're enjoying this innovation of taking a check on the coaches in the press box. Let's check in again now and hear what's going on in the Clemson press box where there's the sweet touch of Dixie in the voices. Let's go, bud. Let's go, football. Let's go. Come on, Brad. Come on, Brad. Run, 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 be afraid of you slant. Okay. You should have kept coming there. Here you too. go, Nelson. 46. Turn his air to 6. 46. That's all we got. Come on, hit it now. Let's go. Hit it. 46. Shit, he's eight yards deep. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Check. Slip. Slip. That's close to intercept there. Yeah. Incomplete pass goes to Kendall Alley as Tom Osborne exhorts his Cornhuskers to get it going on defense, get back the ball. Third down and 10 is coming up for Clemson. 12.43 left in the game. Well, so many times, how many times have you heard a team that has a little tough luck down the stretch say, you know, we think they played a little too conservatively. Well, if that cannot be accused of Clemson's offense. They no. put the ball, they've come after Nebraska time and time again. That's what I meant when I said they are not they do not think this game's over. They know how they have to move the ball. That's right. They're still attacking the Clemson Tigers, putting the ball up even with their 22 to 7 lead in the fourth quarter. But they know of Nebraska's prowess. Now they can come back. And now Austin runs for the ball. It's a little defensive backs hit like cannons. <laughs> Rod Lewis, Tony Felici on a tackle for Nebraska. Here comes the putter out, Dale Hatcher, to kick the ball. The leading punter in the Atlantic Coast Conference this season is a freshman. Of his 40 punts, only 14 will return. Clemson's Tigers with the clock at 2 at 12 12 to play in the game go to the punt. Knocked downfield, a fair catch is signaled for and made by Irving Fryer, who is trouble if he takes off with one. He's broken him for touchdowns twice this season, one from 83 yards away. And that's what he was hot about, Don. He thought he should have taken off with that one rather than fair catching. His partner told him to fair catch the ball. You've got to have people talking to you. We'll be back after this. 
Back at the 1982 Orange Bowl, the Clemson Tigers came into this game, number one in the country, but there were reservations, John Brody, with a lot of people over there. They're really that good. I think they've proven a whole lot tonight. I think there are always reservations when you haven't had a chance to see a team on national television, which really the Clemson Tigers hadn't been exposed to a lot. But anybody that followed Clemson knew they were strong. Ford felt good before the game. He said, I know we line up at 6-6 offensively and defensively, but I'm just a little concerned when I read this lineup that says 260, 255 standing in front of me. Maurer guns it over the middle, and Jeff Davis had a sure interception but couldn't hold on. The big guy can tackle, and he can run as he's way back deep in pass coverage. That's the first thing he hasn't held on to all night, Don. First now let's take a look. Down. Look at this man. This is six foot three, 305 pounds, playing against the Outland Trophy winner. And a little help from the back. You think he's not after it? That's a <laughs> freshman, fellas. Last year he's playing in high school. I tell you, he's a delightful guy to be around, too, William Perry. I asked him how big he was when he was born. He said in that 15, 17 pound area. He was serious. Oh, yeah. William Perry, you were talking about earlier, John, is a spectacular athlete, 6'3", 305 pounds. Here's what he did for us the other day. This is a 10-foot crossbar. He goes up and he can dunk a basketball. <laughs> Look at that big guy. Uh, 305. <laughs> they say he can tear into a load of groceries or it'd be fr frighten you. All-American at the training table. I'd hate to be the bread. <laughs> Critical time for Nebraska. Pitch back. Rozier has it, breaks tackles, and gets a first down for the Huskers to the 45-yard line. Mike Rozier moving very well. He is a quick, fluid back. Really, a, that was a fine decision by Rozier. But take a look at the pursuit, all right? William Perry just busted his hump every time that ball snapped to get into the play. You find a man 305 moving from side to side. That's hard to find. Jamie Williams tight end for Nebraska losing some weight out there. They all are as in a first down play. Nebraska comes off the ball well. Runs the ball hard and Rozier gets a hit for nine yards. This well, could be another of the great Nebraska tight ends like Junior Miller. He's, this boy is a junior now, Jamie. High school All-American football player and basketball. He's wearing down. And you can see how hot it is. You look at the perspiration coming off all the players' face. They're just sucking it up. They know what this game means to both clubs. And Nebraska's putting on their first real good drive in the fourth quarter. They put one on at the end of the third. They've got to turn it into points. Second down and just over a yard. A pass is up. It's caught by Irving oh. Fryer. He loses the ball. Andy Hinton puts on a hit. And Irving Fryer isn't getting up. Now he is. It's tough out there. This is a well-thrown ball by Maurer. Play action pass. Really, everybody in the house knows this baby's going up top. Good attention on the ball, but hadn't had better attention on him. Irving Fryer from Mount Holly, New Jersey. Some good football players come out of there. One for mention, Franco Harris of the Steelers. Now it's third down and just over a yard. Pitch back Rogier. You remember the touchdown before on this play, but he's going to run it. He's got the first down, and he's down to the 37-yard line. First down, Nebraska. Don, do you remember when we mentioned that little reverse play where look out, he might throw it back to the quarterback? That's what, what, what that play was intended to do. Well done on defense by Hedden. Hadmauer covered. Back made an excellent, an excellent decision more than a run. Early in the game, on the second possession of Nebraska, you remember Rozier on that same play rolled out and threw a touchdown pass to Anthony Steeles, and Nebraska took the lead. That was their only score of the night so far. Now they go to the run, and look at Rozier break tackles. Superb running by the sophomore, Mike Rozier. This time he goes for 13 yards right up the middle. Rozier's been the key man in this drive and has played well all evening long. His offensive line gives him a real good surge, allows him to get through at the point of attack. When he does, he knows what to do. He leaves Anthony Rose on the ground, picks up another first down, and they're on the move. On the move they are as Nebraska's now down to the 26-yard line of Clemson. Pitch back. Roger Craig, what a great play, and Craig breaks, and he's going to go in. Roger.
Fletcher. Craig is in the end zone for a Nebraska touchdown. Tom has come over the Clemson coach's box. Well, I, you know, that was just a beautiful run. It wasn't anything that had to do with a bad structure, badly structured defense. But look, these guys are here to play. They made a fine drive the last time they had the ball. This time they turned it into points. You take a team like Nebraska that's come back from a one and two start with eight straight victories. No way they view it over. 9 15, 26 yards, touchdown. And this brings up an interesting decision on Osborne's part. He's now yeah he's sure. now nine points back they've got if they if they think they can they can kick it do it this time with a in my opinion I think you'll try and kick it okay I think you'll try and kick it because that gives them a chance if they make another touchdown to go for the two pointer to win and you want to leave yourself in that position you don't want to miss a two pointer now and have nine points to pick up because it would be a letdown for your entire squad. Right now, John, he's keeping his regular offensive unit out there. See if he sends in the kicker. I would expect him to do that. It's one thing to go for a two pointer from three yards out, it's another thing from eight. But they're having a go at it. They're apparently going to have a go at it. 22 to 13, and a lot of time left. 9.15 to play in the game. I'll explain the reason in a second. It was my mistake. Look at this. Unbelievable. Oh, they must have found something they like in that Clemson defense. They hadn't found it all night. But Roger Craig runs it in for the two point conversion. Now that's why Osborne's coaching. I'll tell you why. Because he is so happy. He put he could not put them in a better position than gaining a tie if he doesn't go for a two pointer. He says file the tie. We're going to try and get two two pointers win the ball game. First got to get another touchdown but it was an excellent call and I made a mistake in my in my judgment. Well that's fully acceptable John. <laughs> you mean I made it before. This guy. 9 15 to go and it's getting real good again here at the 1982 Orange Bowl. Roger Craig for the two pointer. We got a good one going in Miami Florida Don Pricky with John Brody and Bob Trumpy 915 to play in this national championship game the Clemson Tigers now their lead down to seven points 22 to 15 and here is the kickoff by Nebraska after their touchdown it goes into the end zone and Clemson's going to bring it out Harry Tuttle dancing his way upfield he swept under as Nebraska comes alive now the whole team inspired by the touchdown. And then the two point conversion on the run and Nebraska just seven points down with 9 11 to play. Mike Knox a freshman linebacker from Castle Rock Colorado they say he's going to be a great one was down to make the play on special teams for the Huskers. Remington has keyed the Nebraska blocking on those runs up the middle. I think Tom Osborne illustrated after that extra that two pointer that this is not just another ball game. That was for sure up and down the sidelines. Running from eight yards out for the extra point, two pointer. Homer Jordan gives off. Look at the stick there, Felici. The junior defensive end, the Nebraska defensive ends are small, like outside linebackers. Small from a lineman standpoint. He's 6'2, 197, and Felici puts on a textbook hit. The game clocked down to 850 and running, and now Clemson goes second down and nine. Boy, the toughest thing in the world is to have a ball game that you think is in control, get out of hand, and start coming at you the other way. They know they have to make something happen again offensively to keep Nebraska from getting that ball back in good field position. Homer Jordan has a problem. He eludes it for the moment, throws downfield, coming back at the ball is Tuttle. Got it on the one hop. It was 77 as we mentioned at kickoff time and very humid. I don't think it's gotten any cooler than it's worn on John. That's right. Here's a man that keeps his cool. You remember when asked whether he caught the ball in the end zone earlier in the ball game during the first half. He said no I never had it. He also knew he didn't have that one handed it back to the referee. Let's go back and get another play. Jordan on third and nine is swung down the 13 yard line. Nebraska's defense coming up with a big plays. 
Jimmy Williams, the All American, and you see the concern on the face of Danny Ford, the Clemson coach. Hey, that's the first smile we've seen out of Osborne in quite a while. He knows his ball club's back in the game, and his defense is playing as well as it did all night long. Nebraska has really come back. Here's a point now. Hatcher hits it high. Irving Fryer with a fair catch. And the Huskers start out at their 38 yard line after a 49 yard punt by the freshman kicker for Clemson. 7.49 to play in the game. Nebraska down by seven, takes over first and 10 when we come back to the 1982 Orange Bowl. Back at the Orange Bowl, 7.49 left to play, and Nebraska has back the ball. The Cornhuskers resurgent here in the fourth quarter, scored their last possession, hit the two-point conversion on a run, and now they're down by seven, as word comes in from New Orleans that number two, Georgia, is losing to Pittsburgh with just 20 seconds to play. And don't think Nebraska doesn't know that. Mike Rogier takes it up the middle, and there's a penalty marker down as the Cornhuskers bust open the middle, but a penalty marker comes in. All-American Terry Kennard was on the stop for Clemson. The winner of this, very definitely if it's Clemson, will be national champion, and quite possibly if the Huskers come back to upset, they'll be the national title. That was the top ten at the outset of the day. Alabama has been beaten in the Cotton Bowl. George is losing with seconds to play in the Sugar Bowl. Clemson still standing tall atop the list. That would mean it's the first time that a, that a team came in into a bowl with two losses with an opportunity to win the national championship. And Nebraska couldn't be in a better position. That penalty hurt him some, but that's the eighth Nebraska penalty. Clemson has five, but really it's the first severe one in this half. It was a big one. It sets them back from a first down. It's still first down, but it's first and 15 and back inside the 35-yard line. Nebraska's begun to run the ball well, though. Pitch back. They had an option. Rozier gets it. There is the Clemson defense. Speed by 99. Jeff Bryant, the senior tackle. They get to the ball. All of them. Hey, it's been it's been tough to pinpoint one Clemson lineman. Jeff Brandt is an All-American football player. You see him, number 99, making an outstanding play. The cream does rise to the top in the waning minutes. Well, those waning minutes still have a lot of time left. 6:48 to play. To the run hard goes Mike Rozier, the 5'11", 205-pound sophomore from Camden, New Jersey. Came to Nebraska out of Coffeyville Junior College in Kansas. Six and a half minutes remaining in this game, this 1982 Orange Bowl game, perhaps that much time between right now and the national championship, and the champion being proud here at the Orange Bowl. Third and long four. Craig gets the ball, but Hollis Hall is right at him. A substantial loss on the play. Nebraska must punt. Loss of 13 yards on the play. That is one of these plays that was not determined by, by poor execution offensively. That was Benish, a man we hadn't seen an awful lot tonight, making a great play at a critical time. Again, one of their top ball players coming up with a big play when they need it most. Billy Davis goes back deep for Clemson now to receive the punt. Grant Campbell, number 24, ready to hit it for Nebraska. And he really hits it. Boy, they get some kickers out here tonight. Look at that shot. Right into and out of the end zone. 50-yard punt. And Clemson goes on offense, first and 10 at their 20. Let's go back to Bob Trumpy and check in with the coaches. All right, the uh, Clemson coach has got a second breath, if you will, with that big defensive play. They still don't believe that, that, that Nebraska can score that extra seven points to tie the ball game up. Enthusiasm picking up a little bit. Hey, listen. All right. Nebraska's defense has come on so strong in the second half, Don. 
Jordan's been sacked seven times, 11 all season, seven tonight. They've tackled him for losses. That's Homer Jordan trying to roll out. Has been knocked down, particularly in the second half as Nebraska's generated the rush. Dan Kroger makes the tackle there on Jeff McCall, the Clemson fullback. And the game clock ticks on down to 5.08 to play. And it does become a consideration because Nebraska has only one timeout left. That's right. They can't afford to give to give Clemson a couple first downs and get back in the ball game very easily. Tuttle comes out wide to the left. Magwood's in the slot down at the lower portion of your screen, number two. Second down and eight, Clemson. Good handoff. Jeff McCall got it. Good fake by Homer Jordan and Coach Osborne paces the sidelines. Waiting for his Nebraska Cornhuskers to get back the ball. Uh -huh. Final score in Pittsburgh defeats second ranked Georgia 24 to 20. The whole year's history pal these next four and a half minutes determine the outcome of the winner. Indeed. This the final game of the college season turns out to be the biggest one of all. And up, up the middle Jeff McCall carries it across the 30 yard line with 408 to play. Clemson 22 Nebraska 15. First down Tigers. And earlier today uh, you just saw that number two George has lost earlier today at the Cotton Bowl. Number three was also beaten. And right now at the 1982 Orange Bowl the Clemson Tigers resplendent in their bright orange uniforms trying to win this game and win the national championship. 349 left to play and they lead by seven. Handoff straight ahead in the first down carry Chuck McSwain a 190 pound tailback from Caroline North Carolina takes it ahead gets some yards. You see the game clock ticking on down to three and a half minutes to play. And Osborne continues to pace the sidelines the quiet desperation of a losing coach but he's not done yet. This ball game's had it all. And I'm sure we've got quite a bit left. Second down and six. Tigers loaded up on the right side. Hey Jordan handles the ball with Great sleight of hand. And you know, it's a very high percentage of problem type offense. And yet, neither, both teams combined have only had three turnovers all night. Nebraska's had two, Clemson's had one. And the one was an interception down in the end zone, which was a great play by Lindquist. And uh, so he's absolutely been airless. They came from all over America to see if number one Clemson really was that good. And right now the Tigers going for a first national championship send their quarterback to running. Homer Jordan breaks open. Look at him go. When they needed it most, Homer Jordan gains 23 yards. Qualities done that you really check are those in a tight ball game, the greatness of a football team, the right side and left side of the offensive line for Clemson. Clemson's been great all night, but this man's just been coming up with play after play after play in critical situations. Now there's only 158 left, another first down with a seven point lead. We're number one, and right now the Clemson Tigers surely are with 153 to go. Not over yet. Tell you why. I think they let the time run out, took the five, the five yards because Jordan made a great play. He was out of breath. You don't want to make a mistake from being tired at a critical time like this. The five yards means nothing. Hold on to the ball. What a football game. 153 to go. First and 15 now to the penalty. And there's nothing there for the Clemson run as fullback Jeff McCall is knocked down at the Nebraska 45. And that might be the last one. I believe it is. Nebraska's last time out has just been signaled for. 143 to play. 
153, 143 to go, and Clemson looking for the national championship that's eluded them so long. A minute and a half, a little more away. The Clemson locker room and Goosey number one. Their coach told him to be Lucy Goosey, Danny <laughs> Ford did. There was. Well, there's apparently loose, but they're surely still number one. Yeah, they need the Lucy in front of that Goosey. I think that's uh, that's a necessity. Both these clubs trained to a fine edge. They've not played in six weeks prior to tonight, but they've been drilling the whole time coming up to a championship night. Homer Jordan on the sprint out. Calls his own number again, and Homer's down to the 40 and stays inbounds. Tom Osborne and his Huskers out of timeouts as the game clock is down to 130 and running. The Clemson players very conscious of those who would repudiate their number one ranking, but Clemson is the only team in the nation to have defeated two teams currently ranked in the top 10. Second ranked Georgia and ninth ranked North Carolina, the Gator Bowl winner. You know, and, and I think if, this, if Nebraska stops Clemson on third down, it'll be interesting to see if, if Ford punts. I'm sure he will. But they will, they'll only have about 30 seconds left, and it's a great commentary for the offensive line of Clemson. We're down inside a minute to go as Clemson goes to the run. Other than Clemson, this has not been a good year to be number one in college football. Week number one, the Wolverines were number one. Notre Dame was number one the second week of the season. They were gone quickly. USC held it for a while, but they left. Texas had the top ranking. They were knocked off. Penn State then had it for a couple of weeks. And then Pitt took over. Clemson held it, took it over in the 13th week of the season. These Clemson Tigers were not even in the top 20 at the outset of the season. The game winds down. Congratulations to the Orange Bowl committee, volunteers all who put their hearts and minds and everything they've got into a great week culminating in this game. The president of the Orange Bowl committee, Steve Hudson, the president-elect Charles Kimbrell, Vice President Steve Lynch and Bob Lafferty and John Holt, Frank Callahan, reason to celebrate in Miami as coach Danny Ford, the coach of the year, 17 seconds away from locking up a national championship. 33 years old. Don, there's a lot of discussion going on right now. Those people that think the ball game is over have to wait just a second. How many games have ended 17 seconds to go? Now, we've already got the outstanding players, but we haven't got the final score. The outstanding players are very well deserved. I can't think of any two who deserve it more. Jeff Davis from Clemson all over the field all night. Homer Jordan doing the offense as well as he did. They're talking about whether or not to punt it. The assistant coaches are trying to convince Ford to fall on the ball, and I think they've done it. Well, 17 seconds away from a national championship. What a night for Danny Ford and the Clemson Tigers. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Olmeyer. The coordinating producer of football is Ted Nathanson. Tonight's telecast of the 1982 Orange Bowl was produced by Mike Wiseman, directed by John Gonzalez. And here is Homer Jordan running out the clock if he can. Down to 12 seconds, 10 seconds, and it can't stop now. Nebraska is out of timeouts, and Clemson has indeed proved itself to be the number one team in all of college football. Now people foot file out onto the field with six seconds left. A lot of things happened, Don, with a few seconds left in a football game. The officials had to stop it. The people were coming out on the field. I think there's a good chance that, that Nebraska will get one more play. It looks like a kickoff defense back there. They've got six defensive backs as far back as they can go. I'm sure they'll put their, their best four rushing linemen trying to get to the quarterback. Not much doubt as to what Nebraska will try to do. Anything short of the end zone, the ball game's my knee. Six seconds to go. We'd like to thank our NBC statistician Steve Dan, Spatters, Tom Simmons, and Jeff Rhodes as we have just six seconds away. Nebraska lining up. Clemson's got about 15 people, it looks like, playing center field. They've got six. They've got six back there playing center field, Don. They've got seven in the secondary. They're going to rush four people Danny after Ford. the passer. Danny's concerned. He, I've seen too many ball games. You can just go one bet one year back. J.C. Watts That's wins right. in the last few seconds of the ball game. Ball games aren't over until it's over. All right, six seconds to go. Mauer throws it up for grabs.
half. There's five defenders back there, and Hedden knocks it down. The game runs out, and Clemson wins the national championship of college football. championship as Danny Ford leads the Tigers into the locker room 22 to 15 the score Clemson led at the outset three nothing Nebraska came right back and scored on a sustained march it looked like the Hustlers win the roll Clemson took the lead at the half never gave it up extending it to 22 to 7 and then holding on and winning 22 to 15 completing the dream season the perfect year 12 and 0 in a national championship God I think more indicative than the fact that they even won the national championship is how they won it. Nebraska came back, had all the momentum going their way with a little more than four minutes to play. They held the ball and ran out the clock except for the last six seconds. And I mean, they deserve to be national champions. Celebrate good times. Come on, and let's go down now to the Clemson locker room and Bob Trumpy. Bob? Thank you, Don. Well, you had one as a graduate assistant under Bear Bryant. Now you got your own, a national championship. Well, I, I think I'll wait till Tuesday or whenever they vote and see that. But, uh, you know, a lot of people didn't believe in Clemson. And I think that uh, our, we got a mighty fine group of young men. And all except uh, about two missed tackles out there, we played pretty good. And then we tried to make it so close, we couldn't hardly stand it out there. But uh, our guys were fighters, and they did a super, super job. I think our coaches had a great game plan. Our, our guys executed real well. We were very, very happy. And it's going to sink in after a while. Danny, I got to ask you tonight, what was the turning point in the ball game? When did you feel that all of a sudden Clemson was beginning to play its game? Well, I think uh, when we thought they came at us pretty good there the first first drive they had, they moved it pretty good and scared us a little bit. We watched them in warm ups a lot quicker than we thought. We thought we'd be a little bit quicker than them, but uh, I think they got tired a little bit quicker than we did. And, and uh, early in the second quarter, you could see them gasping for air a little bit. Now we felt like we'd get them in the fourth quarter then, and then. Uh, the punt return was a very big, big uh, part of our football game, but we didn't give a three points out of it. But we did, I, I know, just a great job. All our fellas did a great job. As always in this situation, you pass out plaudits to a great many people. Where do you start? Well, I think first of all, you got to you got to start with all these mom and daddies of these boys in here, or these young men. Because without their mothers and daddies, they wouldn't be here. And then you got to start start with their their players. And then our assistant coaches did a great job. Then you got to start with uh, the, the wives of all the coaches who let, uh, who, who, let, who let them coach all the time. And we got a great university, Clemson University. Very Congratulations. Right. Back to the booth with Don Cricky and John Brody. Thank you, Bob. And there it is, a national championship for Clemson. The game, everything it was cracked up to be, coming right down to the wire. And Clemson proving to the world they are indeed number one. Congratulations to Danny Ford, to the Tigers, to everybody who backs this Clemson football team. They did a masterful job tonight at the Orange Bowl. A great game again, the 48th renewal of one of the hallmark events in college football. The final play of the game. Oh, this is an earlier touchdown. And here are the highlights as they all come up very quickly, but in the end, it was Clemson. Now for John Brody and Bob Trumpy, this is Don Cricky. Glad you could be with us at the 1982 Orange Bowl. Good night. Happy New Year.